Crack the bottles, pour the mead. Heroes of the realm is what they called you. Adventurers, men and women of the road, seeking fame, glory, and gold. The festivals unfortunately were cut short when the Princess Ambaricious Viggle went missing. With the help of your new banner women, you found a mysterious letter which was magically enchanted. The missing princesses were cordially invited. Well, I'm trying to do little transitions here. <laughs> Here's the map of Orin. And I the festivals unfortunately were cut short when the princess Amparicious Vigil went missing. With the help of your new banner women, you found a mysterious letter which was magically enchanted. And it said the missing princess was cordially invited to leave her homeland of Stormbrook and go to Barovia in the north. You gave the grave news to Lord Vigil, to the king Ixpic Vigil of his missing daughter who was already deathly ill. Upon hearing this news, he suddenly passed away on his deathbed. Ian Parnish, the regent lord became the new king as the dead king's son, Thomas Vigil, I don't have his picture, but you can search him up, went in, into hiding under charges of treason. King Ian Parnish now commanded you to go to Barovia and retrieve Ambaricious for a princess's ransom of 10,000 gold pieces. You saw all supplied yourself, settled out, settled some debts, and set off. Esmeralda de Avenir, the expert monster hunter, tracked the carriage, but it never stopped or rests. Your party was unable to catch the carriage before it reached Barovia. And finally, you all arrived to this, the gates of this mysterious kingdom after 10 days travel north from Stormbrook. And here's the gates of Barovia. I, so special shout out to one of these artists, James RPG. We're gonna have animated pictures. Here's the full blown picture, which is really nice. Which is the one you really should have. Let's see. And there's the other picture. I'm just showing it for the video on chat. Mist, the water Ganassi, and the fearless holy servant of Nynir and Voltun was sent forth into the strange land surrounded by the fog. One by one, you bravely entered with her the gate slowly closed behind you with a rusty screech. The clocks were breaking. Is it nighttime? Was it just morning? The fog enveloped you, consumed you, and you all began choking on it, except for one, Esmeralda, who was strangely, who was strangely immune to its vile corruption. Before you all could gather your senses, the sound of wolves growling and the strange hay was heard and a woman's scream and then she emerged out of nowhere battered beaten and tired when you all were struggling to catch your breath as the growling gets closer you can see them now in the hazy outline of the dark fog their beady red eyes a pack of wild wolves they shift back and forth in the fog, appraising, hunting, stalking, waiting. And now we're gonna load the map up. So here you guys are. You guys see these wolves, you hear them growling out in this mist, like out here. You guys just came out coughing. There is this woman who came through screaming. Now you see I put a status effect on her right there too. This is our new status tokens. If you hover over your mouse over it, It'll actually tell you the full status description from the rule book. So she has to spend half her movement to get up, et cetera, et cetera. This helps me as a DM for like the million status effects that are out there and as a player, obviously, too. What do you guys do? We're not rolling initiative. The wolves are out there. Stalking, uh. waiting. You hear them growling. You see their eyes shifting. What do you do, Mist? 
I'm gonna check on the lady. So you're just like done choking and you walk over to you. Irina, what are you guys doing? I have my crossbow in my hands, just looking around if they're where the wolves are to be sure they don't get too close. Irina stands up. She moves a little closer and missed you right here. You move right up next to her. Your crossbow is ready. Are you okay? No, I'm not okay. <laughs> What's going on? Too, no time to explain. There's, there's wolves right there. <laughs> There's wolves right here, too. Can we see the wolves where they are exactly? You can see them. They're just watching you, stalking you in the mist. You don't know how they're out there, but they're out there watching you, studying you. I'm gonna move they're preparing to, to do something. You're moving into position. Yep. The mist I is vile, Esmeralda. You know it's evil something very bad about it. You were the only one that was strangely affected, but once you went through, you felt like something was, a thousand fingers were rubbing over your body. You were being probed, violated. What do you want to do, Sinros? I was just going to say, just for grins and giggles, I'm going to throw a minor illusion of somebody stumbling into the fog right over here. Now, if you want to do that, I think, didn't I give you a, did I give you a little token for that? So I'll put the illusion out here. It's a th I just put it there. You see this? It's a little token that we're using. Now I can change the color on this to yellow to make it easier to see like that. Now in the darkness, it's it's dark out. You hear the, uh, I've actually turned on some ambience. It's kind of maybe harder to hear. Let me make sure the ambience. Yeah, the ambience is at 100. So there is some ambience, but you don't hear birds. Um, I think you guys can see snow, right? There's a little bit of snowfall too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of snow falling now, and it was just, there was no snow or anything like that. It's gotten chilly all of a sudden. You're in the middle of the night. What do you guys do? You guys are just staying there, preparing. All your weapons are drawn, Marcus. I think we should get away from the uh, fog a little bit. Good idea. I'm gonna grab Mallory by the back of her coat and start pulling her backwards. Oh, oh, okay, 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 jeez! <laughs> As you guys start to go away, the wolves start to come out of the mist now. Ooh. We roll for oh, initiative. Boy. I'm gonna turn into a dire wolf. Go ahead, you can change your model out. Yes. I'm gonna roll for initiative now. Now, uh, Marcus, you took a stack of exhaustion. You have to lower your initiative count by five. I just rolled. Esmeralda's is up to first. I'm gonna put out the wolves and everything. Give me one second. So we have Esmeralda, then we have Mist. Then we have the wolves. So you guys, for the newer players, we have the initiative counter over here. As you can see, I've also faced it a little. So we're on round one and I'm gonna put out some wolves. You don't roll, you roll the attack thing, right? Or is that oh, what you're Oh, sorry, right sorry. That was, uh, no, that, this is an attack thing with my bow. That's the attack. Perfect, 22, that's a hit. Roll for damage. So you did nine damage. Take the counter, put it next to the wolf mm -hmm. you want to attack. The wolf was badly injured. As you should. I don't you see the wolves. Ten. Do you have to go over the AC? Is that a cantrip? No, it's a spell. Uh, how it does it? On hit. On hit. Let me take a look. Attack. Let me take a yeah, look. It's a spell. What level spell is it? Guiding bolt. One. It's just a plus yeah. five to hit. So you actually hit because you rolled a ten, but you didn't add your modifier. You do forty-six damage, radiant damage. Rolled it. Roll damage. You on the same wolf? You said. Yeah. The wolf. Because How I, do you I kill the wolf? One. Oh, it just bursts into a so bunch of light. <laughs> uh, 
So this just flash of light comes out. Now, as we get better with this, guys, I'll give you little effects so you guys can put those in the battle board if it makes you feel better. The okay. wolf's turn is up now. A lot of you guys are just flat out exhausted and so slow, still tr like getting some of that residual mist you know, out of your body. So I'm gonna move them into position. I'm gonna move Noni's dire wolf by like that, by the way. They're gonna move up, they're gonna move up, move up, and move up. Now, when they're close to one another, they get advantage on attack. There's a lot of wolves. So you've killed one out of five, and then more of them are merging out of the pack of wolves is emerging out. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and there's one way back here, twelve. <laughs> you don't see the alpha male or anything like that, though, uh, Esmeralda. So um, when the wolves are within five feet of one another, like these two guys, even if they're attacking you, they get advantage. So they attack Irina and uh, Esmeralda there. So the first one's going to attack Esmeralda. So actually, let's go left to right. The first one attacks Noni, actually. 19, that's a hit. You take six points of damage. The next one is... Marcus. Marcus, now you have your shield out, right? Correct. I rolled a 20, so they still miss you, right? Because you're in armor. Am I right? Correct. Okay, what's your AC at? 23. Okay, now they're going to attack. They don't get advantage on you uh, because there's not another one attacking, but they're coming up on you quick. Uh, now we're going to attack as Merelda with advantage. So now when I roll the number, I take the highest of the two. So I rolled a 13, then attack Irina. I rolled a 21. So Irina, you're already taking some damage from running through the forest. You take another six points of damage right there. You took five damage before this, right? So I don't know if you have your HP right. So not only are you recording your HP in D&D Beyond, you're also recording it here in this little counter. So it needs to match whatever it is in D&D Beyond. Just so I, I don't can... have permission to interact with the counter, so you don't. I can't do it. No. <laughs> oh well, then just do D and D Beyond for now. I'll fix yeah. it later. It has to do something with the interaction of buttons. And all that. So I don't want you guys fiddling with the map. And that is now Irina's turn. The strange woman who just emerged out of the shadow. She's Irina. Why don't you describe your character a little bit so people can get a visual on it? Um. describe her she's like what does she look like she's kind of like small in stature she's got a, a cloak on and she's like obviously like beaten and battered she's mm -hmm. probably got like dirt smeared on her face her dress is like torn at the bottom and she's she's looking kind of rough right now um let's see what do you want to do Irina? I, first of all, I'm going to cast Bardic Inspiration on Sinros because he goes after me. Um, so that just makes sense. Okay, so you roll a d6 and Sinros, whatever she rolls, you automatically get. You can use it on an attack, saving throw, or ability check within 10 minutes. So you what? add Sinros, you go to your counter here, add four. Perfect. That is not bad. Now you get, that was a bonus action, I think. So now you have a counter on your spot. You should be able to interact with it. It's actually right here. It says four, right? You want to click that down to three like that. I just did it for you, though. So now you have three more bar bardic inspirations left. Now what do you want to do, Irina? It's a bonus action. I mean, I give me one second. I just want to read. Then you're going to checkbox it on your character sheet in D, D Beyond as well if you want to. Yeah. Um. Irina, if you don't hurry up, I'm going to throw the time I mean, I would on. hate to use sleep again, because i that's the only thing I could use last time, but... All right, so what I'm going to do, you want to use sleep? Yeah. <laughs> so on your bag, you have something called pre-built AoEs. Sleep is a 20-foot radius AoE. I'm just going to drop... I'm dragging it out of your bag to help you out, mm -hmm. but actually that's not the one I want to use, so let me grab the other one. <laughs> Give me a second. I want to use the real one, the radius one. The other one I don't like as much. So where do you want to cast it? I'm going to cast it. Uh, hold on. Can I? Yeah, I'll let you it? drop and drag it. Can you drop and drag it? You see this little token right here? Oh, uh, yeah. Where um, do you want to put it? Right back there? Like here, so that it's right in front of us. Roll 5d8. 
Uh, it's 68. I'm going to yep. cast it at level 2. Oh, okay. Cool. 30. So, three wolves fall asleep. We're going to put a status token on... I'll put a status token on the wolves. Um, under They're under basically incapacitated. So, I have all the... Here's the status effects, guys. Incapacitated. They're listed alphabetically. So, I'm just going to pull it out. And I'll drop them next to the wolves that are asleep. Boom. There we go. Now, Irina, do you want to move? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, right now you're in combat, so if you move, you get an attack. They get an attack of opportunity on you. Uh, Irina's kind of a new player, so I'm helping her out, guys. Uh, it's Fine. okay. Cool. I'll just stay right here. <laughs> okay, next person up. Now we're going to take this and put it back in your bag. I'll just put it in your spot. I'll let you put it in the bag. Okay, so now who else is up? That would be Sinros. What do you want to do? What is this? Um, make, you can affect that, one target. What do you want to do? Wait, that only affects one of them? I believe so. so. It's a 10 foot cube. Yep, anywhere. for one target. Okay, that doesn't make a lot of sense, but. Let me take a look. At the spell, it is a it's a little. Is it the ten foot cube and it just says it takes root in mind of eight range eight area eight. is ten feet. That's correct. So you can affect a ten foot cube. So you, I'll allow you to cast on the three wolves. Okay, the range is sixty freedom. feet. See, it says it takes the mind of a root of a creature. So it's singular. It only affects yeah. one creature. Okay. So if you read so the spell description, it says creature. Do you want to overcast it? Uh, the DC is fine. twelve. Not gonna be worth okay, to, uh, what else do you want to do? Oh, Where's this? All right, I dropped that into someone else's. I guess instead, I might. Follow it's a powerful spell thing. against one creature. What do you? What else do you want to do, Sinros? Yeah, but we're against too many creatures. That's that right. I'm actually going to cast, I guess, a silent image. Okay, cantrip. What do you want to do? You have one already up over here. Against the wolf that was kind of coming out, it was probably going to go after your image. What do you want to do? That, so I would like. To... Now this is a first level spell, so you can have this one up, this one here, and it's another silent image if you want to. Yeah, the minor illusion is not. A... Now that one's a ten foot radi uh one. What do you want to do? I'm going to have over to the left here next to my. Or, uh... So those three are down. You want to put I'd it like right here? Thorns in. You want to create some like obstacles, like thorns and stuff coming out of it, right, right yeah, here? Make a large row of thorns in that general area, separating those guys. Perfect. All right. Next, uh, do you want to move? Probably. Mark it on your character sheet that you cast the first level spell. Yeah. Okay. You can move up to uh, five inches. Next up is Noni. You're in combat with this wolf, which I forgot to attack with, but that's okay. No, wait, I did. I tried to hit you. Did you just attack me? Okay, go up. It's your turn. All right. I am going to go after him. Roll to hit. And I roll an advantage, correct? I will allow it since Mallory's standing right next to you. Yep. But technically, no, because she has to kind of be engaged with the target. You rolled a 20, that's a hit. Mm. 10 damage. How do you kill the wolf? I bite into him with my teeth and just go, Rawr! and shake him like a cheap toy. Do you want to move? No, I'm good. You don't want to move up to Marcus? Um, you want to move like right here? I thought I was next to Marcus. Um, You're kind of yeah. now. You're probably about five feet away from there. You see you're three inches away from him? All right. Yeah, I'm going to block out this area to keep the wolves from getting to the people behind us. Awesome. Uh, missed. I'm going to cast... Wait, the I'm sorry. Missed, that was your other advantage roll. Uh, Mallory, you're up. Yeah, so there's a lot more wolves than I thought, so I'm going to take my free action to switch to my gun. Okay, your gun is out. 
Yeah, and we will go with a... So let's go for a straight... Straight pistol, boom, 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 roll. Let's go for uh, this one close to... I Roll to hit. Oh. Yeah. Boink. Uh, What's that? Roll damage. You didn't roll with the um, the sharpshooter one. That's no, okay. You just rolled just a, a straight roll. Ten. You aim your you aim your blunderbuss. It echoes out into the the quiet night sky. This eerie mist comes up, and the bullet goes whizzing right past you, Irina, and blows the head of the wolf in front of you clean off. Mallory, uh, we just did Mallory. Do you want to move Mallory? Um, no, that's a comfortable spot. Marcus, here. you're up. Attack the wolf in front of me. Roll. A lot of damage. 11. Did you roll to hit? Yeah. I what rolled you? a 21. Oh, wow. You're quick. <laughs> How do you kill the I wolf? Did, I just put, pull, pull up my sword and I say, Away with you, evil beasts. And just whack it on the head. Okay. These ones are asleep. This one's still up. It is now Esmeralda's turn. Uh, can I use sneak attack since Irene's close enough to the wolf for now? You have to hide to get a sneak attack. But if you're flanking the creature, you get a plus two to attack. So you would have, so right okay. now you're engaged with this wolf. You can't really, mm -hmm. you have to, as a bonus action, remember you get to disengage. So okay. you, you can attack and then disengage if you want and move out. Uh, I'll hit the wolf directly in front of me with my repair. Roll for damage. Well, Foul creature, you stab right through the eye. What do you want to move? Uh, yes, can I Now move, these ones are asleep. Can I move right up to here? That's right. Now you and can't can hide. I, you cannot hide. For my bonus action, can I use my short sword to attack one of the wolves? Uh, are you attacking with two weapons? Yes. Yep, roll to hit. Now, this is, uh, this is um, first of all, you get advantage when you're attacking an incapacitated creature. So you take the higher of two rolls there. So you rolled a 21. Now, that's automatically considered a critical, since the, the okay. you're basically going up and just slicing the wolf's neck. It yelps out, and the wolf is dead. Okay. Uh, let's go to Mist. I'm going to cast Moonbeam on this one back here, which is the AoE. Bring All out right. the Moonbeam thing and flip your concentration token. I'm really sorry, but I don't think you told me how to do that. No, it's okay. So let's go to your spot over here. So step one, you're casting a concentration spell. So I hit the okay. F on that. Hit F. Perfect. Now you have a bag over here. So here's some number counters. This is for buffs. This is if you buff someone with Bless. These are the okay. HP tokens. And when you do damage, you have also pre-built AoEs. Right click, hit search. Then you see Moonbeam. I actually called it Moonbeam in there. That also goes for Noni as well. So you collect, you right click, get the moonbeam out, drop and drag it where you want to drop the moonbeam. It's a five foot radius spell. Okay. You got it? You're trying to get it? Let me help you out. <laughs> there, it's out here. Where do you want it? Where do you want it? Um, on the wolf over here. It's incapacitated. So I think you just, I have to roll a reflex save with disadvantage. It's just a yeah, sleep. Colin. It's a sleep though, so I don't even think I get a roll uh, because it's a dexterity save. Okay. So roll to for damage. Now if you don't kill the wolf, it wakes up, but it's prone. Um. Oh, I didn't do that right. I'm trying to use the counter. No, you want to roll for moonbeam damage. Let me pull up your character sheet. It's two d ten. Yep, roll two d ten. I wanted to use the damage thing, but I didn't. I didn't I you got to readjust it. You got to readjust the damage thing. You got to unlock it and then click 2d10. Why don't you just roll 2d10 to simplify okay. it? Okay. With it, you guys are going to use a lot of spell stuff. By the way, Cinderos, I like what you did with the pen there with that thing to help without the illusion. 15. This giant beam coming out from Nynir, one of the three moons of Isha, blasts in a 40 foot cylinder. The, uh, the wolf is obliterated now the the i'm just deleting the wolf but the the moonbeam is still here yes now at the start of your turn i think you get to move it so yes. i'll just hit the f button there and i'm going to delete that token you guys are just annihilating these wolves right now now i didn't have you guys roll uh 
what is it, the, the deck stuff or whatever. So they actually pin you down. We'll do that next round. Uh, missed, it's your <laughs> turn. Oh, that was my turn? My turn now. So these guys, um, they come up. They have to. This one comes up, spends an action, removes the illusion. Uh, for, I'm going to say for all of them, for brevity's sake, it continue. Now that spends its action, but it continues its move to move up to Noni. The other one moves up to Noni as well. The other one moves up to Marcus. Now this one can attack. This one is still asleep, and there, there's no more wolves because I already put out the twelve wolves. Actually, there's one back here, comes up and attacks Noni as well. So Noni's taking uh, one, two, uh, two attacks. So let me roll with that. They get advantage because of pack tactics. Roll to 20, so that's a hit. You take eight points of damage, Noni. And then the next one I hit with a 13. Now, did you, do you, what's your AC as a wolf? Four. So that one barely, just it's digging into your skin, your rough fur, but it's, it's not enough. It snaps and growls as it tries to dismantle you. This one attacks Marcus. Uh, does now it's within five feet of this one, so attacks with advantage on Marcus. That one's a hit three because it hit with a twenty-three. I just cast. You cast shield. Yeah. Mark it on your character sheet. The other one is asleep. My turn is over. Irina, what do you do? I'm gonna move up to this wolf and bonk it on the head. Roll to hit with advantage. With advantage. See how smooth our combat's going, guys, and this is great. Mm -hmm. We're getting the hang of it. Missed, make a perception check. Roll 2d20 and that adds your perception. That's missed. So you rolled an 18, you hit Irina, roll for damage. Wait, what? Roll for damage, Irina. No. Now you do automatically do a critical on it as well. For criticals, what how it works is you add the maximum of your roll. You add that damage roll you just rolled, uh, which includes that. Okay, so the wolf dies. You come up and slit his throat. Your sleep spell is working out great. The wolves don't get a saving throw against sleep. I don't think. Is that right, Noni? You can't save against sleep, correct? You just go to sleep. sleep. It goes over your hit points. You yeah, it's just a hit point related thing, so. That's right. You can um, at the end. If somebody wakes you up, I think. Is what do you want to move correct. again, Irina? Do you want to move uh, like another two inches somewhere? Yeah, I'll, I'll move two inches back. Perfect. And then... Just put plop your character there then. Yeah, there we go. Now you can use the Q and E keys to rotate your character to kind of yeah. specify where you're turning. Let's go to Mist. Oh, you are. Wait. My, oh, I'm sorry. Sinros. <laughs> I'm, I keep wanting you to go, Mist. Sinros. I guy. know. I can tell. Let's just work on some damage, I guess. I will mind sliver. <laughs> roll to, roll to. Uh, I need a saving throw, right? That's an intelligence saving throw. I'll roll. Passed. Passed. You wanted to cast it again? Now, is this illusion you got up? Is this a concentration? Oh, we already dismantled the illusion, right? It's there through it. Okay, I'll, so it hasn't taken your damage yet. It rolled an 11. Let me see the intelligence of the wolf. 1d6, it's like, and then whatever. <laughs> this wolf is just a basic beast. It's not like in the library studying, you know? So you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna roll for damage. Put out the HP Five. marker on the wolf that you want, then roll the d4 for this next saving throw and put it next to the wolf. Do you want to move at all, Sinros? Move your character if you want to. Uh, we're going to Noni now. You're surrounded by wolves. You got to be badly injured, right? Getting there. Eh. You've seen worse. And the wood, the Great Wood Vale. Go ahead, Noni. What do you want to do? All right. Now you get to attack with advantage. Yeah. Side by side with Marcus. Twenty-one. Great. Roll to hit. So you're, you're attacking the one right here, I'm assuming. The yes. one that's damaged. Yes. Okay. With eight damage, and it needs to do a strength saving throw. Yeah, I forgot to do the strength saving throw for you guys as well, but that's okay. <laughs> I'll remember it next time. 
haven't gotten the token up yet. She's attacking the one that I just did have it. You have a re you have a blue token that's there, and then you're gonna put you're gonna roll the d4 and put that token next to it as well. So any saving throw up to your next turn. I rolled a five, so it's pinned. Sweet. Now that means it's just prone, or is it? It just means it's prone. So okay. anything else that tries. So to So I'm going through here advantage. alphabetically. Here's pro here's the prone icon. So now this wolf has been pinned down. Um, but I think you dealt enough damage to it to actually where, it, even though it goes down, it's dead. Uh, what you can't you can't move because you're engaged with these guys unless you want to tax the opportunity. Let's go to the next person, uh, which is Mallory. That's just to help you practice those in rows. So you have that blue, you have the red one for damage, which you just delete, and then um, or I delete. Plus you put out the blue one for the saving throw. Mallory, what do you want to do? The gunslinger. Yeah, Let's try something. Let, let's uh, try a dazzling shot on this. Whoops. On the middle shot? guy. Yeah, d dazzling shot. So it's okay. an, an remove AC a grit token. Yeah, remove a grit. It's going to be a, an AC of 14 if I hit. Uh, yeah, so it's regular shot and then. Oh, yeah. You just you hit it. Yeah. Wait, you don't get advantage though, so you rolled a 17 though. Is there a 17? Plus eight for my proficiency, yeah? Yep. Isn't that... Is, 17, that's now? a hit. Okay, okay, okay. Now, how does dazing shot work again? So the dazing shot is that the wolf needs to make a, um, a saving, saving throw. throw. Let me check my character sheet again. I rolled a six, um, it failed. So how, what happens to it? It's confused. Uh, on, right? a, on a hit, the creature takes damage and must make a con safe and suffer or suffer disadvantage on attacks until the end of the next round. So you have your dazing shot here. Uh, did you do, oh, yes. do, do you do damage to as well? By the way, it did well? 11 damage. You did yes, 11? Yes, probably did. That hits yeah. on anything. Yeah. So which one did you shoot at? Uh, the, the middle one. Middle one, yeah. Between the one out of the three, yeah, that one. Let's go to Marcus. I swing and say, die, you, you heathen. 10 damage. How do you kill it? Uh, I put the sword up and kind of like stab downwards, and it's uh, you guys are just destroying these wolves. Uh, it is now Esmeralda's turn. Okay, I'm Round going to three. charge at this wolf. You have your short sword and your rapier out. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna attack it with my rapier. And do I have uh, right, since so I'm flanking it, can I use my the self flanking uh, works? I'm gonna help you attack. out a little bit. I'm gonna move okay. around. You do not get uh advantage on flanking so the answer is no you have to be hidden really to get sneak attack okay. damage uh, but now you're kind of next to this tree so uh you can't disengage the wolf now because you're in your zone of attack but you do get a plus two hit roll for hit uh roll for damage with your rapier how do you kill the wolf I will take i'm to the south of it now i believe so i'll take my rapier and i will Swing it around and stab it right through kind of its uh, back. Now, for brevity's sake, miss the bat. The combat is over, so I'm going to remove your moonbeam. It's still out technically. I'm going to just put it back in your bag there real quick, or I'm going to try to. You see that? How I put that back in your bag there, missed the moonbeam. Yeah. And what it does is, uh, so the combat is over. You guys quickly make work of the wolves and about. You know, 15 seconds or so. Mist, make a perception check with advantage. Ooh. You see it though, as the wolves are dropping down in the down in the battlefield, something is out there in the mist. You feel it, a presence, and Irina feels it too. Something is out there. You can't see it exactly. It's obscured, heavily obscured by this mist. My good job, everyone. <laughs> Yeah. What'd you roll? Plus three. So, 21. Yeah, thank God. It's okay. you, you try to, your shield or whatever that allows you to give you the extra perception. Yeah. You know, I was like, so tell us about your. <laughs> <laughs> you try to see it, missed, and you can't, you can't really. Oh, well, uh, my dad just died. <laughs> what? What? Oh what am I trying to see? God. I'll whisper it to you. Oh, okay. Combat is over. What do you guys do? Conversation starter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Ma'am, let me get a good look at you. See if you need to be healed up a little bit. <laughs> Wait, why are you wa walking away? No, stop, I'm, stop walking I'm, away. I'm, I'm, I'm turning towards <laughs> you. I'm just, I'm just stumbling. Oops, oh, sorry. how how badly hurt are you? Uh, uh, I got I got some scraped knees. You know how it be. Oh. <laughs> Was that one oh. of you? Yeah, no need to <laughs> Um, who needs healing? Yes. Yeah, I do. I, think. Yeah. I can cast prayer of healing. Up to so six he just starts people. licking Arena's face. <laughs> <laughs> now, as we continue, guys, let me show you one other thing before we start kind of role playing a little bit. Over oh. here is the map, way up top now. I've added this new area. This is where you are in Barovia. You rep represented by the, this little token. You guys are on a road oh, right here. now. I just cleared it off to simplify things, but there's a road that you're on now. You just came through the gates. You don't know where you are. It was daylight out just a few minutes ago. And now you see it's a sun. It must be very late at night. What do you guys oh. do? Um, I'm gonna cast Prayer of Healing. Uh, it's 2d8. I'm Did really we... bad <laughs> at using tabletop. I apologize. So it's 10 plus my one thing, but plus three, so 13. So everybody can take it because it's six people. And I didn't take any damage. Me neither. All good. So whoever took damage. <laughs> Back up to max HP. There we go. Mark it on your spell sheet. Now all of you guys have come through some strange mist. You're all exhausted, though. Like, what do you guys want to do? Find a safe place to uh, camp for the night. I highly recommend that we don't stay here. <laughs> yes, I have a bad feeling about this area. I think we should start going away from this mist. Agree, agree. Do I smell a path or anything like that? Yeah, since you're not in your wolf form, your keen senses have picked up. The trail of the carriage that you were tracking through the gates is nowhere to be found. Somehow, some way, you know, time has shifted, places have shifted. And if you actually look over the calendar, you don't know what it is. Esmeralda, roll a survival check. Is that Anyone on... who has a proficiency in survival can roll. Do I have proficiency in survival? I do. Well, bookworm kind of guy. <laughs> so, sorry, I roll a, a survival. Oh, I'm sorry. Esmeralda rolls a nine. You can also, before you roll, you can also use your inspiration tokens and stuff like that, guys. So don't be afraid. But oh, you... and I can also, like, touch you and give you, like, guidance. Yep, or... but you didn't do it. I forgot. It's okay. Now flip your concentration token back since we're considering combat is over. Moonbeam is done. So when we were going through the mess, you said that all of the clockworks were going crazy. So I, so I just look at my bag and check my, my things to be sure all of my things like still work okay. You look at your clock. Yeah. It's completely busted. It's, oh. it's broken. The gears and the, the like the wind you open it up as like a professional tinker that you are it's it, it could be repaired but walking through the mist somehow has totally discombobulated it and you look up at the sky it's now snowing huh that's it i, I was wondering i was looking at that okay i'll i'll just fix it later i guess that's sad all right but at least jamie still works so that that's good i'm, I'm happy for that at least We really need to get away from the mist. <laughs> let's start. Let's start walking. Follow this path. All right, I'll take the lead. Now, so, wait, before we continue, guys, because Marcus was a little late. Over here is sort of the mini battle yep. board. When someone separates from the group, they get slapped over here, aka the death zone. 
but I like to call it. Oops. <laughs> so right here, yeah, Marcus, move your character over there um, for being late. Uh, so basically, this is what I call marching order. You're, as you move into a room, you guys have to go in in a particular way, right? Because there could be a monster in the room. So you guys have to kind of strategic, you know, tactically put your character out. This is sort of taken, quote unquote, from Pillars of Eternity, but I think it's also from like third edition and stuff like that. But this is a way to sort of build an interaction, how you approach a generalized situation. It's how you guys go through a room. It's how your guys are, your formation. You know, also consider thinking about someone sneaking up from behind of you, things like that. So figure out amongst yourselves how you guys want to position yourselves as you're walking down the road. Now, as you're walking down the road, if you're taking your time, it's going to take a long time, Esmeralda, if you want to search for traps, just slowly moving around the road, I'll quadruple the travel time if you want to be really cautious about it. Now, you still get perception checks and things like that. Like, I'm not going to be a total dink about it, but... You know, Are we walking through a forest? You're walking through a forest right now. So do I have my natural explorer where, uh, since I'm a ranger with that feet, I get, I'm more proficient? Yes. You haven't so, asked me any questions though, so. Okay, so just so that like, we're moving stealthily and everything like that as we move. It's correct? a little jarring. You're not moving stealthily. Um, you can sort of break, see I have the little mini battle board here. You can, let me mm -hmm. show it here and, uh, Thing. You have the little mini battle board. You can put, position yourself off to the side where you're saying, I'm moving on the side of the road stealth. Like I'm okay, kind of walking a while, but you're not walking with the party. Right. It's up to you. So you guys need to figure out. So Noni has positioned herself up front. Marcus is slightly behind her. So I'm going to simp. He's off to the left. So you guys need to put yourself. Esmeralda, you could be like over here or something. This is just a simplified way of doing it. The rest of you guys need to put yourself together. Yeah, I'll just be Because what I do is I'm just going to copy paste your formation whenever you go into a room. I say, if I may suggest, and let me just put people where I think they should go, and you can move accordingly. Oh, okay. I'll be here. My wolf token is gone. Who's, who's wolf token? Are you talking about Noni? Yeah. I think I moved it back into your bag. It it's right here. Not in my bag. It's right here. Your total wolf token is gone. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Okay. But, Whoops. Who? Do, we're doing a square kind of thing. And a sword, sure. Yeah. Whoop. Ah, oh, no. Box formation. <laughs> Noni, I know you like to play in your wolf, but like, <laughs> you're too big <laughs> for my tiny, tiny half halfling fa face. Secretly, the murderer. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of so what I'm assuming is Esmeralda is kind of out front, stealthily moving around, like just checking to make sure she's maybe, let's say, like 30 feet in front of you guys, checking around, making sure, but she's remaining stealth. So if we begin a combat encounter, I'll allow you to do a stealth roll, especially through the woods and okay. stuff like that, if, if it's allowed to be rolled. So like you're moving through the trees and you have no movement disadvantage while moving in the forest. It's not considered yeah, rough just, terrain or anything. I just stay out to the side so that I can passively perceive things. <laughs> okay, so Sinros is in the middle, just kind of protected. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> and you're walking okay. along the road, guys. Yeah, okay. My passive perception in this form is a 16, just so you know. All right, let's move over to the passive thing and just double check. I think Miss is still higher at 18. Yeah. You can't beat my 18. <laughs> and I'm yours, so passive. yours in your I human form is 16. Yeah. Uh, yes, it, that's true. So actually, you do have plus five. So actually, Noni, um, at a range out of like 45 feet and things like that, you get kind of an advantage to rolls. You guys are walking across the path. This is your moment to role play. So, Irina, what brings you into these dark areas? Uh, I don't really know. Um, what I do know is my, uh, father was just killed in front of me. And, uh, so that's, that's been kind of jarring. I've had a pretty, pretty shitty day, I would say. So sorry to hear that. 
Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> um, yeah. So where where uh, have you guys come from? Why are you all the way up here? Should we tell her what we're doing? Yes, absolutely. Would you like to tell okay. her, Mist? We are searching for a princess. Princess. That's interesting. That's interesting. Why? Why are you searching for a princess? Like mostly for the cash, but <laughs> yeah. But also because it would. It's it's complicated. I just barged into their situation like yesterday. Is it yesterday? No, it was a week ago. I don't even know. Time is weird for everyone. Yeah. Uh, yeah so it would be Marcus's girlfriend, but not anymore because she doesn't like her. And then she kind of ran away because of the creepy letter. And then we're trying to follow this like weird card. It like disappeared. And then as Rose like, oh, I can't find the card. I'm like, where is the card? We don't know where it is. So yeah, but now we're here. <laughs> and we found you. That sounds kind of complicated. You are a very, uh, buzzy person. <laughs> We're headed to Borvia. There was a letter that we retrieved with Cineros, uh, uh, being able to understand it from Strahd Van Zerovich. He seemed to have taken, uh, one of the daughters of House Vigil, and so we're going there to try to get her back. Well, I just came from Borovia, so... Now, let me kind of clarify. Let me clear, kind of clarify something. You went mm. through the gates of Barovia. I said Borovia last game, but the real name of it is Barovia. So you went through the gates of Barovia. You're in Barovia right now. You're in the territory, kingdom, whatever you want to call it, of Barovia. Now, uh, Irina, you came from a place called the village of Barovia. So a village of Barovia. And you know you don't you you were running you know into this mist, and you got disoriented. It was like daytime or whatever too. You don't know how long you were running for, and you look around at this party. They all look like shit, you know, like they've all taken a stack of exhaustion damage, and yeah. you barely, you know, kind of escaped with your life as these wolves were chasing you down. What do you guys do? I think it's best right now to just find somewhere that we can rest. Take shifts and, and guard. Just yeah, we can do that. Just walking across the road. Have I found a good spot for us to rest? Now, as Esmeralda, you're tracking a little bit. You do pick up faint footsteps, so people have traveled on this road. But they're older tracks, maybe about a week or so old. It's kind of hard to distinguish it. The snow, the rain and dissipation, you know, it's strange. You look up at the night sky to try to, to figure out kind of where True North is. You know where True North is at now as well. So right now you're traveling east. You're like looking at the constellations at the sky. You're figuring out where you're going. If I want to, I can move. I can go over to the map here and slowly move it over. Mm -hmm. Now, as I move it over, you'll see it being revealed. If you get kind of closer to, there's these sound effects things, if you get closer to them, you'll hear the footsteps of you guys walking. We're still role playing, whatever you guys want to do. I want to say Sinros is off to the side, like he's got a minor illusion of a wolf kind of in his hand and he's Trying to mold the face to make it look a little cuter. <laughs> no knee poses. Because <laughs> her walking like speed really so much like. faster than you guys that she just <laughs> runs back, poses for Sinros for like two seconds, runs forward again. <laughs> I just look over Sinros' shoulder and I'm just like looking at it like with in in interest, like holy shit, magic is so interesting. <laughs> now, Arena. She looks bruised, beaten. She was running through the forest for a long time or something like that. And she looks like you guys have been walking with her for a little while. Like she, her mascara or whatever is running. She was wearing a disguise kit. But 
it must have come off in the heat of battle, either with the wolves or before that, or just running for a long time. So she was trying to disguise herself for some reason. So what's hey, with look. the makeup? I can do that too. I'm gonna use my disguise. <laughs> Your yeah, hat. Make myself here, just for the fun of it. <laughs> uh, I I don't normally like uh, people to see see my face, so I I put makeup on it to make myself look different. Mist, as you're walking down the road, you look back. This that creeping mist is still following you. You guys have been walking for maybe like five ten minutes. The mist is like following you. It's the best way to describe it. We don't want to leave mist behind, right? I'm sorry, the fog. The fog. Not to confuse <laughs> you guys' name. Sorry. There's two of them! The fog is it's still in the tracker! Pushing. It must be her family. Miss family. <laughs> or maybe yes. we're mistaken. Oh no! <laughs> You're so funny. Now, as you guys look over here at the calendar, you can see the temperature has dropped a lot. Ooh, it's chilly. Make another survivor roll, Esmeralda. Thirteen. You notice the month has changed by the shifting of the constellation of the night sky. Since we've been walking for five minutes? No. Since okay. you went through the gates of Borovia. That's in Fahrenheit, right? The, 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 it, it appears, you can't believe it, but the stars don't lie. You've lost somehow two months of time. I go back to the party. Irina, what date was it when... What's the last date you know of? Uh, I don't know that. Roll um, an insight check. Oh, I God. Okay. You're trying to recall something about the land you're on. Um, insight, so I get a post. It's chilly out now, guys. Like, you're you were already well-dressed, though, traveling high into the mountains, into Bar Barovia. You can't fully put it, put it together, but you know the year is some 1860, and you can't put it the rest of it. I'm sorry, not 18, sorry, 860 something. It's four, she says it's 400 years in the future. Where did you say you're from? Uh, I think that's uh, right, to be honest. Uh, uh, the town of Barovia, that's where I'm from. Barovia. Yeah. Barovia. Hey, so you're not even saying it right. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> Is that a local accent, or you actually have an accent for, for somewhere else? Well, I'm, I'm technically not from there, from there. Oh, so it's maybe an accent situation. Like, because yeah. I'm a halfling and people think I have a weird accent, but I don't hear it. So maybe it's that, that's it, it's the same thing. Maybe, maybe. Hmm. Do you have some sort of ability to time travel? Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> yeah. No, no. For you, I mean, Irina. Time hasn't changed. I mean, they're the crazy ones. Yeah. They think the year is 431. This Barovia you're from, is it close? Um, well, I don't know how long I was running in those woods for, but um, I would say a good couple hours, so. I just put uh, a picture up. I sent a message in Zoom here of sort of the woods and the path that you're on. Yeah. Irina, cool. you know the name of the woods, though. The woods in the Barovia is just like a generalized term because it's a valley, you know. You guys can look to the sky. You see the, the mountains that surround it. And it's difficult to see, though, at night. Even with dark vision, you can only see 60 feet. But the stars and the dome of the sky cut out. It's like looking at the mountains in Colorado, for instance. You see, like, you know, the dome ends, so you know there's mountains out there. Do you guys see the pictures and stuff? Or do I have to unlock them? Okay, great. There you go. Let me I show the, it's a it's place a called- It's a creepy forest. Yeah, it's yeah. called Sadovich Woods. 
Spooky, spooky forest. Have we been traveling for about an hour now? We've been traveling for about 20 minutes. Okay. What do you, why, why do you want to know? Because I bounce out of my form in an hour. <laughs> oh, you do? I don't, I thought it lasts until you basically break out of it. Nope. One hour okay. at this level. That's fine. What do you guys do? Is, is your town off the main path, or is it? Um, should be on the main path eventually. R Irina, do you have survival as a uh, uh, ability? You have, I'll allow it to make a survival roll because you have jack of all trades. I'll allow it, but normally I wouldn't because I won't. You have to have oh. proficiency in survival. So I'll allow you to make a survival roll. Survival roll. Now you could okay, use bark inspiration. You could use your tokens and things like that. I didn't give you one, but I can now. Yeah, hold on. give me one second. I'm gonna look at what your survival is plus two. Yeah. Okay. I'll just yeah. Just to check yeah, my yeah. bark inspiration. Yeah. Again. This is strange. You should if you're heading east, you should already be at the town. You know it doesn't make sense, but you don't know where you're at. You were running for hours from the terror of the night or the day or whatever. You were running from the wolves. Time, you've pure, you've lost track of time and space. You're disoriented anyways. Yeah. But if you're heading east, it doesn't make sense. You would have already reached the gates of Barovia. You know, heading west wouldn't make sense. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I, that's, that's weird. Okay. Can I, I go back to the group and I tell them, I think we should make camp. Many of us are Roll a survival check. Mist, is your mist family still following us? Yes. <laughs> you look back at the fog. It's probably yeah. about a hundred feet away, but it's still like Creepily following you. It's you don't being know a why. little creep. It's creeping on you. Creeping this. Creeping this. <laughs> creeping this. Now, Noni, as you're sitting, what'd you roll? 17? Making camp here would probably be ill advised. You don't know time. what's going on. You probably should either find, wait till. Just traveling in the day, daytime is much safer. Yes, you're all exhausted, but yeah, and you are traveling on the road. It's safer to travel on roads typically than in the woods, mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to it would something. be it would be ill advised perhaps. You don't know who would come or whatever, and to actually get a full night's rest, it needs to be uninterrupted. What's okay. your question? Mist. The mist or the fog, the fog following yeah. us. I'm trying to say fog instead of mist, but I know. Sorry. Yep. If we stop, if I if we all stop moving, will it still be coming, or will it stop? You have to try to stop, stop moving. So guys, stop walking. Okay. 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 Yeah, okay. I'm going to watch it to see if it still Roll continues a to creep check towards perception check with advantage. Now, all this is happening. Noni, you're just kind of in your wolf form. You're smelling. You're getting your sense of being the wolf of the forest again. You don't perceive. You don't. I think you have what's your pet what's your bonus though? It's Plus three. three. You don't know. I mean, the mist is kind of for a minute. You can stand <laughs> you there for a minute. See. But Noni, <laughs> as you're in your wolf form, you're like thinking back, you're gonna pick up the senses and you're starting to remember some stuff as you were leaving Stormbrook. And you know, it's a little late now. Remember but you do you're like you just bugged by Ian. You were like, never trusted that asshole. And you tried to smell him as, you know, he said he was going to meet you at the gates from last game. Ten days ago. But when you smell things, you remember it. You tie like a memory, just like Ambaricious. You don't smell her at all on this trail. But you do pick up, you do remember something. You couldn't quite put your finger on it when you initially smelled him. But your time in the forest, like, you smell almost like a cave moss. But then you remember, you bat, you were back in your human form and Ian wished you goodbye when you were near the gates. And you he kind of gave you a firm handshake when you were leaving. 
he was wearing perfume when he le when you left. And as you look back, you're remembering it. You're looking back at him. He did look a little weird when you were walking away. You don't trust him at all. You've always had a suspicion about Ian. Even though he's promised to pay you 10,000 coin to find Amberitius. And you think to yourself, how the fuck could he have been known to wear perfume by the time he was walking to the gate? He must have bought it on the way there. Odd. What do you guys do? Oh, we could keep walking here. So you've been standing here for a minute, just kind of like Noni's kind of reflecting on this. The mist, the fog, I'm sorry, the fog stops. But it's oscillating a little bit back and forth. The fog is following you. And Irina, make a will save. Oh, okay, hold on. Irina does That's not want to stand still. She is terrified. She was running for hours for some reason. A will save? Yep. DC is five. Wisdom, DM? Yeah, wisdom. I, I, use will, like, I use will save because it's from the third edition. Sorry, guys. You're fine. Um, wisdom saving throw. I'll get you said. I know Sinros was asking that last. He's like, wisdom save? Because <laughs> I blew it. I was like, make a will save, Sinros. When he opened the letter. Got it. Fat 10. Passed it. You're feeling uneasy, <gasps> but you're like, you want to get, you want to just find a shelter, find safety. You know, this is, you feel like you're still being followed. I have a quick question in regards to Bardic Inspiration. Yep. So if I... Whoever had Bardic Inspiration, which would be Sinros, it is worn off, so you need to reduce it to zero. Oh, wait. Never mind. I retract my question then. <laughs> no problem. You guys are walking yeah. across this road, and up ahead you see... You're looking out, and it's coming to the range of... Now, Mist, you have 300-foot dark vision, right? So Miss is the yeah. first one to see it, really, because the rest well, of you. Well, I also have three hundred foot. Do you? I'm in front of it. Yes, I do. How? Uh, because I'm a half. Orc. You only have sixty foot dark vision. Oh, sixty foot. Oh, then my token's incorrect. That's just because of Mist. Mist has an oh, ability okay. to cast it on you. Yeah. And she hasn't cast it on anyone. Marcus, by the way, you're walking around. It's dark. You're just kind of just barely see what's up with you. Do you light a torch? <laughs> Because this is sure. another reason why you're, you're right. Marcus whips out a torch as a 30 foot radius, but now everyone on the road can see you. I wouldn't do that. We would. We'll. We'll see for you. I so, can't say it. We'll, we'll all just thing. hold hands. Does someone you know, want to give Marcus a rope or hold hands with them as he's kind of walking through the darkness? No, and he budges up under him like a seeing eye dog. Familiar, <laughs> climb up into his helmet. For all technical purposes, Marcus. Like even from last battle going forward, you're considered blind. It's like I can't see a thing. Huh. Who's touching me? <laughs> arf, arf. Who else has regular vision? Mallory too. Yeah. Mallory is also I, blind. I can't see shit. I'm like, eh. Nobody. <laughs> I could have grabbed your tail a bit too hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I'm just gonna gently hold it, but not really far, so just so I can see where I'm going. Tear made torches to light the way. Let's just light this torch already. No, I did no. That's ill advised. Feel sharp Don't teeth. Wanna... Just gently mouth your hand. <laughs> if we run uh, into more. Here, I will cast dark vision on him. Or eyes of night. Sorry, eyes of night. You can now see 300 feet, and so can you, Mallory. Ah. Oh yeah. And Sinrose, because I can cast it up to three people. I don't need it. Sinrose doesn't need it. Okay, fine. You don't want it, don't take it. <laughs> okay, I can see. Really. Yes. Oh my god. 300 feet, too. What is this strange magic? It's called the Eyes of Night. Enjoy it, it's from my goddess. So you use it, mark it on yeah. your sheet. So now Got you it. see 300 feet ahead. And you three, as soon as she's done casting it, up ahead you see two figures, small, on the side of a road. Off to the left, of the road you see a house i'm sorry on the off to the right of the road you also see a house sort of in the wood what how far guys, in front about 280 feet in front of you 
two smaller figures. Do you want to go up ahead, uh, Esmeralda, and kind of get the... Who wants to move up ahead? How are you guys approaching these figures? Yes, I will start moving up ahead. I'm still uh, being very stealthily, but moving at a normal pace. Okay, okay so Esmeralda's kind of... you want me to move you to the death death zone? Are you moving off by yes. yourself? Yes. I, say, I, I yes. see Make Esmeralda a moving towards the death zone. <laughs> <laughs> Make a stealth check. I'll, oh, by the way, I will roll it for you. Oh, I have advantage. I see that. You hear the roll. I won't roll it again because you did so well. You're stealthily approaching these figures as you're getting closer. You're just kind of moving at double speed as the party is kind of walking around on the road still to kind of have the have the fog prevent up. Sorry, go ahead, Sinros. What? Can I have my familiar kind of follower with the instructions to alert me if anything happens? As you see, Esmeralda, you don't know where she's at. She's already gone stealth. Okay. Do you want to have your... You see it. You don't, you, the group has said that something is up, but your dark vision is only 60 feet, so you'd have to send your familiar up. You're about 150 feet away from the, the two figures. Esmeralda, you see them? They're two children. <laughs> Just sitting on the side of the road, down from the road. So they're on the main road, and on top of you look to the right, there's a house up there. What do you guys think? Do, do look, I sense anything strange? One of the children, the like, they look like she's like 11, the other is like a smaller boy, maybe five or six and years old. And it's the middle of the night? It's the middle of the fucking night. It's very odd. What do you guys do? Should we should we go ask for help? Maybe we can ask their parents if to know where. No, Esmeralda, you're in the death zone, so you don't. The other mm -hmm. party, they don't see this, but I'm obviously relaying it to the, you only. So you have mm -hmm. a. I'll give you two at, a rounds to react. Can I draw my bow and fire a shot, kind of, yeah. maybe five feet, uh, away from them? As you guys are getting closer, I'm going to link you the pictures of them. What do you do? Esmeralda, you have one other action to do before the party catches up to you. You're in you're hidden in do the they, bush with your bow out. Do they do any You wanna attack you wanna roll an attack shot? Uh no, I don't wanna hit them. I wanna shoot near them to see what they do. Roll to hit. Just the ground? Yep. Just roll to see how skilled it is, like how close it is to because if you roll a one, you'll actually strike the child. It's so skillful, it shoots right in front of them, and they're startled. The girl goes, ah! She looks around. She's like, who's out there? Help! I don't do anything else. <laughs> That's okay. just, you, I'm role-playing it for you. Help! I Stranger. draw my rapier, and I... Now, the how party, is, this I... is how that looks now. You, the party has caught up. The party, I walk out of the woods now. And they see they see these two gun. strangers coming up. They see him, and they say, please don't hurt us. They run up to Marcus. He's up front. They don't see you still, Esmeralda. Okay. Even though you attacked, I'm assuming you've re-stealthed after your attack. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you remember, you get that action as a, okay. a rogue. They say, please don't hurt us. We won't, little ones. What are you doing out here? She's trying, she just kind of starts breaking down crying. She points to the house. She says, Mommy and Daddy, there's a monster in the basement. What do they smell like? Roll a perception check. Or insight, I'll allow you to use either one. Uh, yes, please, roll me a perception check. I'll roll for you, if you want me to. Oh, okay. You usually don't let me roll. I'll roll. I'm trying to have you guys <laughs> roll a little more. That's fine, I'll roll for you. They smell like a little boy and a little girl. I get this, on my my this, knee and I was like, "Tell me about this monster." It's in the basement, <laughs> mommy. <laughs> something's gone on. And they look at the house. The top light of the house turns on. You see a figure look out at you. It looks like a silhouette of a woman. I'm gonna link you the house. I um, I have to unlock it. You can role play while I'm kind of doing it though. So what are your names? My, I'm, I'm Rose, and this is my brother, Thorn. Thorn is just like, he's like, doesn't look, he's just like this. He doesn't, I have to turn off the walking sound effect. 
There's a lot to do, guys. I'm gonna stomping in place while we're talking to these children. <laughs> hey, hold on. She's like. Gotta get our steps in somehow. She's like. <laughs> There's a monster. Will you help us? The monster in that window there looks like a female. She looks at that's mommy. <laughs> She's upstairs. What is she trapped? I don't know. They look dis disheartened. They look a little disoriented themselves. I, the boy sorry. comes up and tugs so at your nice. like cape, Marcus. He's like, "Will you help us?" He must be like six years old. Is my armor doing anything? It's still your armor usually shines when it's in the the, in the time. So, I'm gonna move the time forward. It's now four thirty in the morning. You guys have been walking for a half hour. Well, I say Your that armor we only sh shines like kind of in the in the radiant sun of the holy sun, you know that type of stuff. I say we go look at the house to help the children. It might be a place to stay. Mm -hmm. Well, they were interacting with the kids. I was walking around the house, um, just doing like kind of a brief search for anything out of place. I'm gonna link you the house. <laughs> Give me a second. Then Rose will just go up to the kids and tell them, Don't worry, Marcus here is great at slaying monsters. He's going to put a little minor illusion around Marcus to make him look like he shines a little brighter. Roll a performance check. <laughs> uh, that's a d20 plus 3. Did I already have that? No, I already have that. <laughs> Not my best work. <laughs> This is what the house looks like. Oh, spooky mansion. The, some of the residual fo uh, fog is around the house. The fog, you look back, Mist, is still following you. Fucking fog. You know if it gets close, it could kill you. Right? Because you took one stack of exhaustion. Yeah, I could go. You feel it though, Mist. Because you're very perceptive. The god of Nynir, in the, even in the d mist of twilight, allows you to see beyond sight. You are being followed by something. You don't know. I'll stay out here and, and watch. And the, the kids go, it's not safe out here. The, the kid boy tugs on your cape a little bit. I was like, come on, let's go, let's go find this scary monster. Okay, okay. Okay. And they follow you, and you guys walk, are walking to the house. Does anybody else want to do anything before you guys walk in? I've kind of walked around the house. Have I noticed anything out of place? I've shown you the picture of the house. Mm -hmm. It's a large mansion, three stories tall, with an attic. It's uh, nothing out of place. I mean, you're f used to fighting creatures of the night. Mm -hmm. This, like, it's very hard to scare you. Think of yourself kind of like a witcher almost. Like, it takes a lot to scare the shit out of you. I mean, obviously, anybody else, though, like, Irina's got to be a little fucking spooked, though, by this. But, Irina, you do want to, you need, you found some people that are seem to be helping you. Um, and you need to find a place to rest yourself. Um, you feel really disoriented. You guys walking to the house? Oh, walking, just gonna shuffle through my pockets and trying to find my little like tinkering doodads I've been working on. And you have this little tiny clockwork chicken that kind of show it to the kids, saying, "Hey, if we manage to take care of the monster in your house, I can we can sleep at your house, and I'll show you how this thing works." Does that sound good? Really? Yeah, it does. Sounds when it's not broken. Now it's broken, but. <laughs> I, it needs a little bit of care. And then it's gonna go cluck, 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 cluck. It's gonna be very cute. It's gonna peck it makes a little, a little bit of bit. noise when it starts doing that. Yeah. Right? But it's broken. In the dead of night. Oh, it's broken? The clock? Yeah, because... They, no, your clock is broken. The other thing, your chicken gear thing, is still working. Yeah. Oh, I thought it wasn't working. 
you you kind of you just maybe had to do like a little fix on it to like get it to little. work. Yeah. And they're like, so just, and uh, the girl holds out her hands, and the boy, she, he want she wants to give it to the the little boy. Do you give it to her? Yeah. So I slightly crank it, and then I delicately place it in their hands, and they just go like. Dup, dup, and she dup, like dup, reaches dup, down and she hands it to the boy. The boy takes it and he just like stares at it. Is that cute? That's my master taught me to do that. I don't know where he is now. I hope he's okay. I don't know where he is. Where is he? I don't know. Anyway, I've been working on this and I think it's really fun. I can also, if I really want it and if I had time, it can even do a music box. Isn't that cool? I can change it and make all different kind of stuff. And I just really like chickens. Chickens are really funny. Do you like chickens? Uh, I don't know anymore. I I like... I think mommy was cooking some food in the kitchen. We'll go get this sorted out for you right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to take the my little chicken, put it back into its little coop in my bag, and then we're going to be able to play with it once we have the monster deal with it, okay? Are you letting and the children chicken. follow you into the house? I say, I, before we go, like, open the door, I was like, what does your mother and father look like, and what's this monster look like? Mommy, he's a mommy. Daddy looks like a daddy. And the young kids. <laughs> and the monster? It's big. Scary. All right. Now, I put up some fog of war. Hopefully this should work. You, you see him down there, guys? He got disconnected somehow. Oops. <laughs> He's frozen He's looking at something, up. yeah. So oh, we'll hopefully no. get a message from him. So uh, I'm just gonna, so how it works is the fog of war is activated for your character. The two children are there. Do you want me to put them out? Yeah. Okay. I, I think it would be wiser if they stay outside. Don't maybe? move your character there, uh, Noni. Oh, you want, let me get your character, Noni. Give me a second. Okay. Just t let me know so I can fix it. Now your yeah. character, Noni, should have the fog of war as well. Now, certain characters have greater fog of war. I'm gonna put your, your human form back here. You have a half hour left on yep. your wolf form. What else are you guys doing? You look am there I with the... the party right now, or am I... Yes, I've put you back with the party. Okay. You've scouted around the house, because I'm keeping you out of the death zone. Okay. Um, you see it, the entranceway is a wrought iron gate. Hold mm -hmm. on here. I'm trying to change the music. A wrought iron gate hinges on one side, and it's locked on the other. It fills a stone archway. Well, there's a stone portico. Move that giant sheet out of the way. <laughs> Put it right back there. Um, I was just trying to read it. That's okay. You can scroll back to your section of the table. Um, there, uh, basically, there is a giant portico. There's like a a, vent, a gate here that it could be slowly opened. Completely now right. these the, now these doors. Let me see if I can reinvite Sinros. There's a thin iron gate, and you walk through it. That's why we have the, the marching orders. I'm going to stay by the kids. The kids are right Kirk. next to you. I'm just going to say they're right next to Marcus. I can put him out if you really no. want me to. Let me go right. grab him. This is the I entrance stop. to this, the house, right? I stop my little chicken, put it back in my pocket. The child has it, the small chicken. You ask for it back. I mean, I, if, if they stay kind of outside, playing with I it. can... He's, the little boy is just like holding it a little bit. I, I mean, if they're staying outside, I can. They can he can keep it. They're going with you right now. They're right next to Marcus. They yeah. trust Marcus. Like he looks like a nobleman. He looks like a strong, powerful knight. This is sad. Yeah, the children shouldn't be outside. Um, so normally I just open the door and make a lot of loud now. This loud is the marching noises, order. And then typically the monster just comes towards us. Does I'm moving have Esmeralda a better idea? back with you guys, and Noni is <clears> up here, just like before. So that's why I don't want you to move this stuff here. This is how I assume your marching order when you're walking through rooms. Oh, so don't, that it's in guys, space? don't focus on that spot too much. Come back to the main <laughs> battle board. The main battle board is what matters now. 
So Marcus is up front unless he wants to change the marching order. The two children are near him. I can go grab their models. That's what I'm trying to do. Do not, this is now a do not touch zone unless you guys tell me you want to move. No, I'm, I'm, hey. ask, I'm asking people, do, you, do, do I need to repeat it? No, that seems like fine. I think we should all go into the house. No one should stay outside with this fog. Um, they the said children. that it was in the basement, right? Yeah, I mean, mommy now we and see daddy, it. keep it in the basement. Oh, they keep it there. It's not a pet, is it? Yeah, I'm scared. Will you help us? Well, not Jason, but we might need to talk to your mom and dad first. What are their names? They're five and. Elizabeth and Gustav. Eleven. The only the girl is talking. The little boy is just kind of holding on to your cloak a little bit, scared. Mm. Well, somebody was up in that top window, so, and it looked like a woman. So you look back, upstairs. like Miss. You take a look back. The light on the top window goes out. Okay. All right, so if someone doesn't have a better idea, I'm just gonna open up this door and ask for their parents. You walk through the gate? Oh, no, I was asking. The You're party. not walking through yet? Okay. No, I asked the party. Okay. We're gonna do something. We should go. Let's go, let's go, let's go check it out. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, let's All right. Back. I pulled the gate to the side and move forward. Okay, like it moves hands. open. Now, these doors, guys, when I import them over, they're usually hinged. This, uh -huh. So I have to delete the doors. So, so I know gonna, uh, you're knocking on the doors? doors? Yeah. I knock on the door and I say, Mr. and Mrs. Durst. When you try to knock, you raise your hand to the door. Yes. The door slowly opens. A little yeah, I, I hit I knock on it. It's opening and you kind of <laughs> knock on it again and it shuts as you re-knock onto it. And the, oh, so it opens towards us. Yeah. Okay. So I'm moving Marcus's character up. This is where Marcus is at. The children are right next to you. Like that. You see that? Yep. And the rest of the party is kind of moved up a little bit closer. Now, here's how it works, guys. I'm moving your models. Esmeralda, you want me to move you up closer here? Uh, sure, yeah, I was afraid too. As you bump over Thorn here. You trample the Thorn. child let me, uh, with the toy. Let me see if we can get Sinros back in here. Okay, so you knock on the is door. Is the map There's supposed no... to be completely black? All I see is our characters and nothing else. There's, it. let me Correct. double check. That's how it's probably supposed to look. Um, I can see the inside of the house. You can? For one, one square. That's fine. That's exactly right, because it's fog of war. I can't see anything. I it's just... Um, war is worse. Do you, see, you don't see anything? You don't see Marcus at all? I, well, I see the characters, but that's it. That's We're exactly to... right. Okay. Because that's okay. all you... It's just like what you see. You can't see outside. But you're saying you don't see any aspect of the house? Like a Yeah, I don't see... Yeah, door, no, nothing, nothing. Like, you don't see the nope. wall right here? No, nope. well, I see absolutely nothing, but... All right, yeah, well, I just, we'll, see we'll just, that's okay. just give like, it a second, guys. We'll see how it works, okay? Okay. Just let it happen. It will see I can it use works. my imagination. It's fine. I will delete the fog of war if we need to, okay, guys? Okay. All right. So you knocked on the door. No response. I was like, Elizabeth and Gustav. I say we just go in. No answer. Well, the, the, boy, the boy kind of trembles a little bit. He's like, I was like, I'd rather not intrude if I saw the mother upstairs. They look at the boy looks at you. I was like, Elizabeth and Gustav, we have your children. <laughs> no response. I look at the little girl. Can you open your door? She goes up to open the door. Now, hopefully, like, the back up, child, back up, child. Okay, so Marcus stops her from opening the door. I was like, no need for heroes today. I'll open the door. Now, Noni's probably getting a little fidgety because she's going to lose her 
pack if you guys don't start hurrying up. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I open the door. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys see it now a little more in here? I see a Marcus stone should. wall. You see I it, Marcus? See it. I see like the like the oh. first floor, but I don't see like anything in it besides like what, you know like the objects and, and what have you. I'm gonna move you guys in a little bit. Like I see the rooms, but I don't see anything in any of the rooms. There's rooms. Do you guys see there the rooms and stuff? <clears throat> yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, no. Rooms, but nothing in. I'm not moving you all in there yet. You guys are just slowly moving in. I'm moving Mo Noni up and Esmeralda up because they're kind of more of the front line guys. I'm just going to... So, yeah, Thorn is over here. You know, he's kind of following back. You're walking into this main area here where you're at, Marcus. Mm -hmm. Oil lamps are, like, hanging down from the ceiling. I'm going to turn the lights up on the table a little bit now since you guys are walking into the house from the outside. Ah. Ooh. So now you're walking in. It's like well lit. So you could put out your torch now. Do you want to put out your torch? Well, remember you I lit it. I oh yeah, that's right. You have the three. I'm sorry. You have the 350. Yeah, I I'm never sorry. started. That I lasts for to. one hour, by the way. So that's I one. tried to. It was yeah. denied. Mm -hmm. You see some oil uh, lamps hanging from the ceiling, and you see these like large oaken doors here, and then you see like a painting here on the side um, of a red windmill. Okay. I, I asked the children. There's no uh, uh, alarms or traps for intruders here, is there? I have a tendency to step on things I shouldn't. No traps. The house is safe. All right. I'm going to open Just the next door. Just except for the monster in the basement. Yes, we'll find that monster. Did you open the door here? Mm-hmm. Now, for brevity's sake, I'm moving you all into the building. Now, as you're moving through, you're searching, like with the passive roles we talked about. So Esmeralda is taking no chances. Uh, don't move your model unless I do it for you, just to simplify things. Because I don't want to move you over something, and then you gain like a fog of war you weren't supposed to see. I'm moving Irina up now into the room. Okay, in this room, this is a main, like, it's the main hall. It's a wide hall, runs the width of the whole house. Over here, you see a marble fireplace. On one end, and sweeping a red marble staircase right here. On the wall is a long sword. It's mounted up on the wall. With the windmill cameo, worked on the hilt of the long sword. On the, the wallpaper is ornate and decorative with vines, nymphs, sapphires, tires, and so forth like that. This is kind of in a house that's in the middle of the woods. So it must be like hunter themed, like huntress themed or whatever you want to call it. Rose and Thorn are still in here, kind of close to you. Uh, uh, Thorn is playing with the, the trinket still. He, he keeps rewinding it up when it stops, and he kind of giggles to himself a little bit. Sinros is pretty interested. You guys are so... Now you've entered the room. See, there's no combat, so I'm just trying to help you guys out. There's no combat, so you've searched the room. There's no traps and no secret compartments. I will let you know if there is. Because we use your passive scores. There's... Do you guys see anything else in the house, or you guys are just seeing this room? I just want to make sure the fog of war is working correct. I, I see all, all the rooms, but <laughs> but no like people or anything. Because I probably I don't and see anything. You don't see Still. anything. Nope. Okay, Esmeralda, I'm gonna reveal you. Um, I'm just gonna change your fog. You're red, but I'm actually gonna change it to black. So. No, I'm red. Oh, Esmeralda's not. There you go. I changed Esmeralda to black. So basically, Esmeralda will reveal the fog of war for everyone. You see that now, Esmeralda? Yes, I do. So, okay. So I just set, I'll just have to change that in the future. I think your color is different, so I messed that up. Black is the game master's color. The room is eerie. I mean, the fireplace is unlit. 
The doors behind you, shut. All by themselves, the toy that you had falls to the ground. Out of the boy's hand, you look to the children, they're gone. Oh. Yep, seems about right. Oh, 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 where'd you go? You see it, it just chinks down, and you see it just walk, wibbling on the floor a little bit. I just catch it and then cup it so it can stop doing any noise. I'm going to cast Divine Sense. You're looking for celestial undead creatures or things of that nature? Does How long does it last for? Just it's, it's a snapshot. It just happens, and I know it or don't. You see nothing. Uh, I sense it. I won't see it. I'll just know. How far do you sense it? 60 feet. You just sense something? You want to try to sense something like undead in nature? As an action, you can detect good and evil. Until the end of your next turn, you can sense anything affected by the hollow spell or know the location of any celestial fiend or undead within 60 feet. You have to see it, though. And it shows an aura around it. So you don't see anything. Do you want to undo it since you now know the true description of the spell? Yeah, it only lasts six seconds. Unclick it. You don't. I won't allow you to cast it since you didn't know what it was. If you see something, like if you did it on the children, then maybe. But you didn't. I do didn't. Them. Exactly. You didn't. So I know. I did it right now. You don't see any. Okay. Click it then. You see nothing. What else? Is I already clicked it. I have yeah. five of them a day. Great. Uh, Sorry okay. about that. Well. Noni, fifteen minutes till your your form wears off. Okay. Noni, well. as you enter the house. Something is calling out to you. In particular, no one else, but you feel a, something is yearning for you. What do you all do? What do I smell? If you want to open a door, you smell nothing. Okay. Unusual. What do you guys want to do? You want to open these doors, or what do you want to do? You have all these doors here. I will open for you if you want. Ooh. We can split and a up. Stare, and, and a stare. You want to split up into the death thing? <laughs> no, the death, I don't. The death one? Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, people are like, what the hell are you talking about? This no. is the death house. I go, Thorn and Rose, where did you run off to? <laughs> um, I don't know about you, but I didn't see them run anywhere. Well, Noni only <clears throat> has short time left. I think we should split up to cover as much ground as possible. That's what I suggested. Yeah. Everyone said no. <laughs> I'm taking. I'm taking Mallory. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You're splitting up? Yes. Where are you guys, you guys sure you want to split up? Now, as a dungeon master, I advise against that. This is the sound of the house, by the way, guys. It's creepy. <laughs> and you want to split up? No, so, let's move, pleasant. let's move up these If you split stairs. up, I start reducing the, the counter from the passive roll, okay. so if you slip into a trap, that's Let's head good. up the stairs, then. You want to head up the stairs. Okay, let's go up the stairs. Uh, Maybe start will, at the top and work our way down. So I'm going to move you up the stairs. Don't move your I characters. Know. I will help you out. The kids said that it was in the basement, so I think the worst threat's down there. So let's start as far as possible up top. <laughs> Oops. Well, we did see the woman in the window, so. Right. I think we should check on her. Maybe it's Elizabeth. Mm, yes, those children are probably a reliable source. I'm going to move your characters a little bit. I know the fog of war has jumped up, but this is kind of also experiment for me. It's Unlit nice. oil lamps are mounted on the walls of this elegant hall. Elevated above the mantelpiece is a wood frame portrait of the Durst family. And I'm going to show you the pictures of the Durst right now. You see the picture, like a framed picture. You see the two children and the two parents in the picture. Here's a picture of Gustav. Did you send that to everyone or to a specific person? I just sent it right now. Hopefully it's sent out to everyone. All right, this just happened. I see Gustav. And I just sent the one of the woman. You guys are kind of just fiddling around searching through the room, right? Oh yeah. And you're, these are some nice suits of armor, you know, that are in here. And, um, can I touch it? Yeah, you go up and touch it. Yeah. <laughs> and they attack you. They oh, get a God. free attack. <laughs> I, I apologize. I know it. They... Do it, can I jump away from them? Are we going in a battle? Yeah. 
oh, the back. armors. Oh, we're back. Okay. Two of the armors animate. There All right, guys, I touched the armor. <laughs> now they both get surprise attacks. I'll put them out. Now Miss is the one who touched it, so I'm going to move her character up. Oh, There's one over here. I originally so had to lay it. Mash. And actually, Cinderos is right in front of the other one. And Mist is over here. We're going to move Irina over here. There's, the room is tight. That's the problem with this dungeon. Is it's very tight. A dungeon? I thought it was a house. Well, I mean, dungeons are everywhere. Dungeons the wilderness. <laughs> All right, let me hmm. roll. So uh -oh. it's going to get two surprise attacks. Once one attack on Cinderos. I already rolled once a 19 against uh, Miss. What's your AC? Um, 14. Hit for nine damage. The, the armor comes alive and slashes you right in the stomach. Now this, so they only get one, I'm only gonna allow them to get one attack. The second one against Sinros is a 20. Sinros, you take eight damage. As they slice your attack, now you roll for initiative. The, the armor looks completely inanimate. Um, it's undetectable, even by someone like Esmeralda. Um, I just rolled for initiative. Missed you up first. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to go ahead and use guiding bolts on him. Roll to hit. Now this is like an animated piece of armor. Sixteen plus, I think five. That's right. right. Roll for damage. Okay. Then put your tokens out. When okay. you, we'll try to fit them in the room. If you want me to, I'll put them out. A four d sixes. Okay. Let's roll four d six. Save the roll to your thing. the token out. Oh no, what did I do? I, I have eight of them. Clear, Clear. and then re-roll it. Okay, there we go. Nailed it. <clears throat> 17. Put 17 then... points of damage on the armor. It's not dead. It's damaged though. And then mark it on your spell sheet. And since you're in the zone of attack of it, what are you trying to do? Because you're up and like touching this armor and it comes alive and just slashes at you. The house um, is coming alive. If I move, it's gonna have an opportunity to attack on That's me. That's right, and it's already really tight. So anytime you move through another player character, it's double movement. And it's just really I guess, tight. I mean- I guess it's, I, I'm not gonna move. I don't want an opportunity. Okay, let's go down the order, Marcus. I'm gonna turn to my left and whack that thing and be like, "Get away, you evil house!" Fifteen. The armor is thick, and it reflects your damage, or just it parries your damage. Esmeralda. Uh, I'm going to move up to here. I don't really want to. I'll shift mid okay. them over a little bit. It's tight. I know. It's this yeah. dungeon is really tight. It's kind of mm -hmm. hard with the models. That's fine. And then I'll attack with my right here. You can move, uh, Miss can move within the zone of attack. You rolled a 15. Mm hmm It just deflects right off the armor. All right, and then can I attack with my uh, yes, roll. short sword? Yep, you don't add your proficiency bonus, I think, to it. Roll to hit. Uh, cool. With an offhand attack, you don't add proficiency, I don't think. You had 13 for some off. reason. You rolled a 16 now? Yeah, 16, yeah, I don't know we'll why. We'll say it hits, roll for damage. Now, uh, uh, what is it? I'm sorry, uh, Miss, you need to put out a token on that guy. Oh, I don't know what you mean by that. I will help, I'm gonna do it for you this time. So you guys can always grab a token right up here near the, the board, the status effect board. I'll go grab it for you, but that game doesn't crash. I'll do it for you. Yeah, I'm gonna we'll just put it off like, to the side here. You did how much damage? Uh, Six. How much damage did you do, Miss? I don't remember. Put six down. 
Now this one, we're gonna put this one. Oh yeah, you're up here, so you add it to that one, guys. Uh, add it to the you did 17 14. damage. 17 damage plus six, so add six no, to 17 yeah. damage. Oh, oh okay. 17 total. How much damage did Miss do? 17. How, and Esmeralda just hit. Six. So add six to that. See how we're keeping track of everything, guys? But you guys keep track of it, so it helps me out so we can move combat along. Mallory, you're up. All right. Um, let's try cross crossbow bolt at... Um, let's try and kill the guy here. Let's Roll to hit. That. I changed that for eight. Yes, I did. Uh, let's go. Let's go shock shooter. Sure, why not? Your armor, your, you sharpened your tips <laughs> on the road and stuff, right? You do 20, twenty damage. damage. Hell Plus the yeah. twenty-three, so it does forty damage. The armor loses okay. whatever bending was tied to it and collapses. It is now. Do you want to move it all, Mallory? You're right here. You're really kind of close to this armor, though, so you probably can't move out. Um, no, I, Irina. I guess I, yeah. I think you muted. Sorry, I had it. The mysterious on my stranger, head. Irina, the bar. <laughs> um, how much damage was done to this Zero. one already? Zero. Because uh, you see it by the token out here. Can I? Could I do Vicious Mockery just for funsies? Let me take a look at the spell. It doesn't sure. have to understand roll. me, I can just do it. Yeah. You would have to roll. You try to cast Vicious Mockery, roll Blight out. What do you do exactly? Um, I look at it and I'm like, I'm like, let me, let me think of an insult. I'm like, you big idiot. That's all I say. <laughs> roll, roll for damage. 1d4 damage. 1d4 damage? Okay. Uh, 3 damage. Let me just... And you look at it, yeah. it appears unaffected. <laughs> it's immune to psychic damage. Oh, crap. Do you want to move it all? Uh, We're just doing this for practice a little bit. Nah, it's a piece of armor right that has here. no like mind, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. My yeah, yeah. Uh, Noni, you're up. You're can right I... here near the stairwell. Yeah. Can I fit over here to attack it? Cause I'm uh, let's see how your movement. Going. Yeah, we can move you over there. Let's not move your model just for brevity's okay. sake. We'll assume you're right here though, and you're flanking it, so you get a plus two to attack. Excellent. Um. Yeah, because you move into its zone of attack, then shift over. Yeah. I'll Seven. Oh, but you get advantage, right? Pack tactics. Yeah, pack tactics. The twenty-two. Twenty-two rolled it for damage, then add it to the counter. Eight yeah. damage. So you add it to the counter, Noni. Then and we're gonna to roll a strength saving throw. Okay. What's the DC? Uh, it's fourteen. Thirteen. Yeah. I think the the DC is thirteen. It fails. It's DC, so it's prone, but now it's its turn. It spends half its movement standing up, so it's standing back up now. Even though you've latched onto one of the suits of armor's legs and stuff, right? It gets up and gets two attacks. And Sinros is the easiest target, so I'm going to bully him a little bit. Um, Sinros is right here next to the fireplace. I'm actually going to swing one attack at him and one attack at Noni. So the first attack is at Sinros. As it swings this giant greatsword, it misses Sinros. Second attack on a Noni, 15. Noni, it's halberd buries down into you, take 13 points of damage. Now how it works when your shape shift is it goes through your, your above damage first, then down to your real hit points. So your real hit points gotta be affected by now, I think. No, wait, because you got healed. Uh, it is now Sinros' turn. Sinros is practically useless against this kind of enemy, so I'm just gonna create Two minor illusions that uh, I'll just mark them down here so you don't have to do much with the pen. Perfect. We'll just say. Perfect. Right there, and they're just sitting there yelling at it. <laughs> okay, sure. Uh, it is now Miss Turn. Let's 
Good. It's crowded now it around this. If you, if you move in front of this mist, the illusion is broken. Okay, I won't touch it then. I'll just <clears throat> cast Guiding Bolt again. How, are you out of spells now? Uh, no, I have one more level because I'm passing it at level one. Uh, um, is it a touch or is it has 60 foot range, right? Roll to hit. Yeah, it's a 120 foot range. Yeah, I see that. Plus five to hit. Roll. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. Roll. You call down from the powers of Voltoon. You hit. Yes, Roll damage. At 21. Radiant damage. A guiding bolt flies from your fingers. And you add 11 damage. Yep. So just roll. I'll put the 11 on the counter. A bolt of light beams out, strikes the chest of the, the animated armor, and dents it severely. The animated armor is now bloody. Let us go to... Marcus. Die! You strike out with your long sword. 15. It deflects off the armor. Let's go to uh, Esmeralda. Uh, I'm going to, because I don't want to mess up the illusions, I'm going to take out my bow and fire my, I'll move as far back as I can. What, what do you want to do, Marcus? <laughs> uh, am I flanking it? Yeah, so you get plus two, but you didn't hit it still, right? So oh, 17 a miss? It's full plate mail. So uh, 17 is a miss. Okay. 17 is a miss. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, did you roll to hit? Uh, no, not any. Uh, you whip out your, your bow. You take a shot. Sharp. Now, the thing is, you're shooting through targets. You do not have mm -hmm. sharpshooter, so it's considered a plus two AC at it, so you got to roll really high. That's considered partial cover. Unless you want to shoot through the illusions, you could probably, you know, maybe hit the Yeah, illusion. can I shoot, like... I just roll to hit. Let's see what you get. Uh, My illusions are, like, four feet tall. Oh, you want to make them four feet tall? Sure. I'm saying that they're illusions of me. Oh, okay, like a mirror illusion. Got it. Cute. Yeah. All right. So, I don't know why it's... Roll to hit. Natural one. We'll assume, for brevity's sake, the one illusion here. The arrow flies through it uninjured, and the illusion fails. Uh, let's go to Mal Mal uh, uh, Mallory. Mossy, yeah. Mal uh, uh, Mossy, yeah. I'm just trying to read the initiative count on my right hand side, my monitor yeah. here. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, uh, that went well the first time. I'm gonna shoot it with another sure. crossbow bolt. Uh, Here you go. You're right next to it. Yeah, that hits. You just hit it with what? a regular hit, plus 12. Yeah. You see the uh, HP on the creature. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so, sorry, I'm go back to here. Plus 12, uh, 20, 31, I think. What? The armor is on. Sorry, yeah. Armor is on the last leg. It is now Irina's turn. All right. Let's see. I I took down my thing that shows me all my spells. Great. Um. This dungeon, by the way, guys, just trying to help you guys out. This is a practice dungeon, really. Practice dungeon. Yeah, I can't really do much either because psychic you're, damage. You're right here. So, yep. um, I guess I could go up to it and try and bonk it on the bean. Um, you move into where the old illusion was at. Roll to hit. Okay. Uh. You whip out your rapier. You rolled really well. You rolled an 18. Roll for damage. How do you want to kill the animated armor, Irina? Uh, the animator armor just crumbles down and collapses, but how do you want to destroy it? I just bonk it on the bean. I go like, pop to its mm. head. Just the armor just collapses. A loud clanging is heard through the house. What do you guys do? I, do you guys want to go through the study here? <laughs> yes, let's not touch any more armor. Everybody, hands to yourselves. <laughs> Can I cast? Um, what's that? Detect magic? It moves with. It's me, a right? ritual, right? Do you want to sit in here for ten minutes and cast it? Um, yeah, sure. You know they can explore the other rooms. 
Okay, so Mist is now separating from the group. And so your perception drop. Uh, well, Noni's still in her form. Your form is up for one or two more rooms, Noni. So you move into the room here. Let me pull What's it What's in here? Oop, oop, oop. Oh. Noni's plowing through. It's a type of, say... you see these like bookshelves and things back here? It's a bookshelf. And as you guys are searching through, Noni finds a hidden doorway back here. You know, you see, um, doorway. you pull a book, you find something unusual. Sinros is in there too. You guys are all searching. And it leads to this area back here, a secret area. Secret tunnel. Secret tunnel. You, see a, you guys see a chest Ooh. with, Ooh. Uh, and since there's nobody around, you guys can just take 10 to lockpick it, right? So Esmeralda comes in and lockpicks it, right? Dismantles yep. the lock. You see uh, three blank books. And you see three spell scrolls. You'd have to identify them, which would take 30 minutes. To I'll do. just can I just put them in my backpack. Do you want Esmeralda? To, Esmeralda's leaning over the chest. You're reaching in the chest and everything like that, and you're just packing away the scrolls. Mm -hmm. Right down, you've acquired three scrolls from the second floor of the Durst Manor. And you see a windmill. Uh, you see some deeds. You're like looking through some of the papers, Esmeralda. See a deed to the house. You see a signed will from the parents. The will is signed by Gustav and Elizabeth Durst and bequeaths the house, the windmill, and all the other family property to Rose and Thorn Durst in the events of their parents' deaths. Can I see the date on the will or the deed? Well, great your question. Aunt, what is the date on that? It's a good question. You don't know because the time here is different. So it doesn't really make sense. The year says 632. Hmm. And you also see in the chest a letter. The seal is broken. You recognize the seal. It is from Strahd von Zarevich. What do you yeah, I do? don't touch that. I don't touch that. Uh, I'm going to call Sinros over and uh, ask him to do that one. So uh, by this time of like searching everything, Noni casts Detect Magic. There's magic on the letter. It lasts for 10 minutes, and now you're out of your wolf form, Noni. And I'm sorry, I missed Detect Magic, but Noni... Let's, uh, did you swap your character already out? We're gonna just assume for brevity's sake that we'll leave your wolf model out, but you're okay. back in your human form. Oh. Because we're just moving through this really clumped house, right? So I don't want to keep like copy pasting models in. Let's leave your model there for now. Let me go copy oh. your model over. Just give me a second. Yeah. It'll be Interest. easier for us running around. A lot house. of micromanagement. Boom, there we Thank go. Um, let me pull up the letter from the Strahd's to Durst, so I have to unlock it. So I create as a private article on World Anvil. I'm going to pull up to view the article. There's magic on the letter, Sinros. What do you want to do? Do you want to open it? Okay. Here's what I'm going to do with this. I don't know if this is going to work. Last time the magic... The last time the magic happened when I opened the letter, I'd like to cast Mage Hand... You tell to everybody. You tell everybody back the hell up, and you cast Mage Hand and want to open it up. I want to essentially stand like outside of the room where I open it and open it up within the room. Esmeralda's in, assuming she leaves. Everybody clears out of the room. The ma the de the letter is put on the desk here in this sort of secret, private study, right? And um, you, Esmeralda, you've packed up the will to the house. You've also packed up the. Uh, the deed to the house. It's in your back now, so you want to write that down. Also, so I would actually award you an inspiration point for this, because you're thinking so cleverly. And the letter makes a noise, as of course you open it up. It's the abyssal tongue. What's Wait, it saying? I speak abyssal, don't I? I'm going to just assume, because er you guys aren't really in a rush right now. So the letter's magic goes off as it's opened, as the like, the one before, but now you actually hear the dark tongue, the abyssal tongue. It talks about being scared. 
you know, you will fear me. What do you do, Sinros? Okay, so I've already opened it and it's made its noises? That's right. I will bring the letter to me at this point and then copy down into my book what it says and then probably just... Sinros, tiny little gnome body, moves over to the desk. You see him, he's trying to match the penmanship over. I will now link the letter to everyone, but Sinros, why don't you read it out in your gnomish voice? It's a letter from Strahd to the Durse. Durs, <clears throat> you sacrifice swine, goats, and sheep to false gods to bring back your crops, children, and old times. If that was not enough for you to dabble in the bendings of the world, now my guests have come under the assault of your ignorant knife. How dare you assault my playthings? They are mine and mine alone. You will earn no favor with Boo or from me, for I rule here, and my word is that of the gods. Blaming me and cursing the light for your failed crops, sacrilegious. Boltoon has no place here. I know your dark secrets and your infidelities, for I see all. The darkness is like the light for us. You are unprepared, unworthy of such gifts. If you only knew the true power of the darkness, continue to try to earn favor by your idiotic sacrifices and rituals with whatever trinkets the earth's brought at the last war in your own peril. For this, is your only and last warning before you incur my wrath. King of Barovia, Strahd von Zarovich. Hmm. I'm beginning not to like this Strahd person, I, I gotta say. What do you guys do? Now, when you guys move to a floor, I just remove it. If you want to move to the other rooms of the house, be my guest. You all. Noni, who just recently bounced out of wolf form, just looks around and goes, that was wild, small children. And, oh, they they were just gone, and we're now in a weird house, and it is rough not being able to talk to you all. Mist, being as perceptive as you are, you look at, you're like, you feel something strange on your hand. Something's happening. And, you know, the water, you feel uneasy. Your skin feels different. Something is happening, but you don't know quite what yet. What do you guys do? Are we uh, on the second floor? You're on the second floor? floor of the Durst Manor. Is there a third floor? The stairway goes up to the third floor. Do you want to go up to the third floor? Have we been in here yet? You have no. What room? No. You have not been in here because the, can I, the letter, can I go in the here? door is here. I will open the door. The door is open. It appears to be some servant quarters. In the in the le in the letter, would I know is Voltun some sort of god or deity today? She is. Okay. <laughs> I don't have it in my notes, so I wouldn't know. It is the god of seasons. God of seasons. Okay. It's one of the gods I worship. Goddesses that I worship. Sounds like the uh, Durs were actually good. And it said you tried to bring back your children. Does that mean those two little kids we saw were actually dead? Do you guys want to go into here? By the way, do we look in here where I'm dinging? Where? The music yeah. room? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. We just, that's the room. The that's door the is open. Quarters. It's the servants' quarters. Oh, okay. I mean, this is a manor. Like, it's a, this, this family was quite wealthy. In the music room? There's nothing in there. Okay, I'm assuming it's a music I'm deleting room. the doors. You see a piano. A harpsichord and a bunch of chairs. It appears to be a music room. Gossmere drapes over the windows of this elegantly appointed hall. There's a grass pl grass plated chandelier hanging from the ceiling. What do you guys do? I mean, I don't see anything in here. Can I do like an investigation or something? Like rummage around, and see if I can find anything. We're kind of just. Like I said, we're doing taking 10. When you guys move into a room, the whole okay. group starts to search the room, looking for hidden doors, secret passageways, things like that. Nothing is out of the ordinary. But if you look mm -hmm. at the, um, you're looking at the wallpaper a little bit, that's like very well made. 
the wallpaper has, as you look closer, there's embedded skeletons into it. It's not creepy at all. Oh, cool. oh, lovely. You needed to kind of get closer to look at some of the fine de finer detail of the wallpaper, though. Senros, you cast some spell. I can't hear you. <laughs> when I cast Detect Magic, does it follow with me? That's right. As a 30-foot or 60-foot range, I'll tell you if you see something magical. Oh, boosh. What else do you guys do? You guys want to go upstairs? Anyone yeah. know how to play the piano? <laughs> I mean, I could, technically could, I guess, because I'm a bard. I'd love to take the piano. There's a harp there. and a piano. I'm going to play the harp. No, we don't want to make string, a bunch of noise. You string your fingers across the harp. It plays a beautiful sound. And then you, you're like, ah! Oh, There's God. a little cut on your finger. You take one hit point of damage. <laughs> As your finger okay. starts to bleed a little well, bit. What it was we worth it. about touching things? It was worth it. It wasn't not worth it. It's completely worth it. I don't and know I, what you're talking about. You just use mage hand twice and play the piano with them. Ding 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 ding. ding. Roll performance <laughs> check. <laughs> oh, these cameras that I believe. Roll your ch roll your performance check, Sinros. Try to save the dice roll if you need to to help speed it up. You roll a seventeen. You play this beautiful piano silhouette, and as soon as it's finished, everybody's kind of just admiring it. As you become the new bard, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> as you know, you're like nursing your little finger, maybe like you know sucking the blood out of it a little bit. But as soon as you're fi finished, your mage hands pull back. Right, you look at the mage hands. They're hands of skeletons. Okay. <laughs> no one put their hands together Stop and leave things. the room. Let's leave the room. Not touch okay. anything. Unless things are done ourselves. So let's leave, please. Let's leave. I want to leave. <laughs> what, enjoy the music? You guys want to leave the house or you want to go upstairs? Upstairs, upstairs. Yeah, let's go upstairs. upstairs. Okay, like, let, leave me the room. let me copy paste your models over here, guys. Just relax. Let me find the third floor. Let's I'm on the head. Don't touch anything. Noni's just gonna reach out and put her hand directly onto Mallory's face. <laughs> well, it's like, well, uh, okay. Now, what I'll do is remove the fog of war up here, okay? Just to make things easier. Because, see, that's what's really slowing the game down, guys. The fog of war is just really taxing the system, I noticed. Yeah, it's tanking. Yeah, so I'm gonna just remove this fog of war just to make things easier. So there you guys go. You guys are now. You guys are now on the third floor of the Durst Manor. Where you guys Sorry, go? Sorry, I'm on my face. I don't know what happened. Based on our orientation, which way would it be that window, Ben? What window? The window. The lady was in. This is the front of the house. I want to go. The lady must have been standing in this room. Yeah, I want to go over here. Where do you want to go? Like here. Like you want to go in into this room? room? You open the yeah. door. So, uh, Irina is kind of like. Oh, she break. goes first. Let yeah, go first. Irina goes in first. The door opens, and you see a maid. Oh. Nope. And you see the whole party actually. <laughs> They're like, you look at yourself. You see your, all your duplicates <laughs> suddenly there, and you're like, what the? Sorry about that. You see a maid. She's standing Maybe. over the bed. There appears to be something in the bed. Uh, what do you do? It must be the uh, woman. You yeah, this is her. Move her forward. There we yeah, go. thanks. Does anybody want to come in here with me? <laughs> she hey. seems to be. You hear her. She's like crying a little bit. Where am I? Okay. She's crying. Uh, Are we moving everybody in the room? Okay, so Irene is moving up yes. first. Let me move you guys' models in the room. Disaster. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. I know. It was this, just stomping this on the dungeon bed. Is just so tight with you guys. You guys kind of <laughs> surround her. She like she you see her, she turns over. I'm going to show you a picture of the maid. Ooh. I'm sure she'll look completely normal. Oh yeah, of course she will. Of course she will. Cuz everything else, else in this house is completely normal. Is my my water skin still freaking out? <laughs> it is a little bit. <laughs> I don't like this place at all. 
They're telling us not to drink any water in here. <laughs> what? What? This is what the maid looks like. Mm. She looks like hey. a nursemaid. She's like, she looks back at you. She's like, what did they do to my child? And as you guys are kind of nearing around the bed, you see a child sitting on the bed and like wrapped up almost, but the face and everything, the whole child is wrapped up, just laying on the bed. And she looks at you guys. She turns around. She's like, what did they do to my child? What do you guys Divine do? Divine sense. Divine sense, click it on your character sheet. Yep. Undead. What, Ooh. both of them? You look down at the child. The child is not giving undead vibes, but something's wrong. Are they both undead? The child does not appear to be undead. And the maid? The maid is undead. It's like, man, you didn't realize you're not alive. <laughs> <laughs> she looks back at you. Now I'm assuming you kind of you're kind of where you're at in the thing, and she says. She's like, God damn it, dude. Um, <laughs> I love you though so much. You don't understand. She she just says, I'm not alive. No. We should leave she her. looks at her body. Yeah, why? She's like, are you sure? Mark, well, it's funny. She kind of looks alive. I, I just go to the edge of the bed and I try to wave at the kid, like, hi. You look Hello. at the, the kid, you kind of get closer to you, trying to interact with the kid. You see I just a, find a wave. You see a like, little body, to... like, squirming in this, like, wrap. I was you like, know. that thing's dead, too. I wouldn't touch it. She's <laughs> like, can you help my child? We can try. We can help them how? By killing them, of course. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> Take their heart. She looks well, down there, and then she says, "We are. Uh, what did they do?" Territory, guys. I. This is a child. I was They're like, undead. Uh, They're monsters. I was like, Thorn and Rose All disappeared, ma'am, and now you're undead, and the house has tried to attack us. We want to help, but I don't know what you want. I just take the chicken out of my pocket. I don't crank it. I just try to play with it. Chick, 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 chick. Chicken. She's, her face chick, is like the picture. It's emotionless. What do you do? Uh, I ask if she knows what happened here, because obviously something happened. She looks down. She's trying to remember. She, she's like... No response. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna approach awesome. that uh, child and get a better look. You want to just look, or you want to touch the child? Do not touch the child. Do not touch Don't the touch child. Don't touch the child. Don't touch the child. Don't touch the child. Don't touch the child. The use, the, use the skeleton <laughs> hands. To touch are swarming. The child. She's like, she screams out as you touch it. The clothes vanish. Oof. And her appearance completely changes. And I'll show you a new picture of her. Oh, God. I know. I know. Let me see if I can ca cure this disease. Or... <laughs> Esmeralda, you just killed him. Or, or Esmeralda you poking. know what this is. It's a ghost. An oh, un yeah. untorn soul that has not been able to find its way to tear. Uh, can I... And we roll for Good. initiative. Can I do an intelligence check to know uh, more about its, uh... On your turn, uh, I'll allow it. Okay. Where was the baby, by the way? It was on the bed, it vanished. Into the wraps. Right where I need to be. Okay. So you're exactly right where you need to be. We roll for initiative. I'm gonna delete her model. And replace her with the ghost model. What? So she's not undead, she's a ghost? A ghost is undead. Oh. <laughs> I knew that. Mystery solved. <laughs> Sorry, when I think I'm dead, I think zombies. Oh, God. That's a really nice model. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you, thank Ominous. you. Let us roll for initiative. Let me see what the ghost initiative count is. I just want to chat, tell you guys this will be challenging. Ooh. I don't think I want to Plus be one. Damage. I will roll. <laughs> Does everybody adjust it because of the exhaustion? 
Irina, yeah. you're up first. Uh, oh God, I am. <laughs> How did that happen? I'm gonna. Let me let me look at one ability real quick. I'm gonna not so casually move behind this guy. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna assume I've it's an action, it. so it hasn't done it I'm yet. Like, oh. Her face melts away, and you see a face of horror on her as it's distraught. Some fiend that hasn't been able to find its way home, unsolved. A ghost remains, and a tie between the material plane and the shadow fell. Irina, what do you do? Uh, <laughs> um, I am going to. Can I even do anything? I don't know. You tell me. You can cast uh, Bardic Inspiration for starters. Yeah, I was gonna say that. I'll do that on. Um, uh, it's on staring Twitter. right at Marcus since he's she's he's yeah, disturbed it. We'll do Marcus. You want you want Bardic Inspiration? I would You're love that. It. Thank you. Roll You're a d6 get it, and whatever then, you say. <laughs> roll a d6. Add to your character sheet. The door slams behind you. I had a four. Add a four to your roll. The door slams behind you. If I can change it, I'm trying to change it. There we go. <sighs> you hear a loud slamming noise behind you. Noni, you're up. Hey, I'm gonna cast Moonbeam. Okay, uh, roll to hit, or do I need to make a save? I believe it's a Constitution saving throw, fourteen. Okay, I will roll. Looks like a fail. Why don't you roll for damage? 2d10. And it's right on her. Seventeen, 17 damage. damage. Um, put a token out. Put seventeen damage on her. Um, it is now Esmeralda's turn. So I'm gonna do an intelligence check to recall any information roll. I know, and I have advantage on it, I believe, so I can do it twice. Exactly, because you have uh, undead as your specialty. Van Richten yep. taught you well. Oh, whoops! I did not do the negative one, but I do have a negative one. So That's thirteen. Fun. Now, you roll disadvantage, actually, when you're doing this, by the way, because you're fit Oh, you're not fatigued. I'm sorry. So no, roll uh, roll again, because you have advantage, right? So you roll I, twice. I did, yeah. It was it was a 13. I forgot to put the negative one on it. Oh, OK. Um, but you didn't roll twice, did you? Oh, no, yeah, you I did. did. I'm sorry, you did. Yeah. 13. Uh, mm -hmm. Basic knowledge is like ghosts or spirits that haven't been able to find their way home uh, from the shadow plane, really to be spirited away. There's some un something unresolved here. Um, so. Do I know if anything doesn't affect them? Um, like. Uh, you need like, it has a resistance. It's like, moves, it's between yeah. the real world and the ethereal world. So all, it's a resistance to a lot of damage. It is now the ghost turn. It, first of all. Can I still attack or no? Yeah, sorry. Okay, right, I'll attack my rapier. Nice hit. Rolled a 14. So you hit. Roll for damage. Um, it takes half damage from piercing damage. So you only do okay. three damage to it. Uh, it is now the ghost turn. Everyone needs to make a... Everyone who's looking at the ghost, which is everyone, needs to make a, const, a charisma saving throw. Oh, as this horrifying visage reveals itself, it lets out a terrible shriek. Everyone within 60 feet of the ghost. The DC is 13. Uh, you can add your modifier if you have bardic inspiration, or you can roll with, I'll allow you to use your inspiration point if you want to roll with it. So who failed? Esmeralda, you didn't roll. Or no, you failed? Yeah, I failed. So uh, Irina failed, Miss rolled a nat one. Do, who here wants to use their inspiration point for starters? Uh, oh, good God. Oh, roll again. Uh, oh, good God. So let's roll. Let me take. So Sinros also failed, right? Ah, this was not good. So Noni, you passed on the second one, but I'm going to take your coin now. Okay. For now. All right. Who else Who else failed? I got 13, so to fail. Uh, the DC is 13. So. You passed. You're fine. Okay, okay. Who else? Who else failed? Marcus? Oh, I passed. I have a so you guys, are, those are the only point? Uh Noni, I just got the, the token off her. So everybody else passed? No, I 
I think a lot of people fail. What's going to happen Miss? if I don't use the thing? I'll tell you. You got to do it, though. You're going to do it now. It's now or never. I feel like it's gonna be terrible because of that yes. one. Use it. You sure already right, know. You told me you were another. You told me in your other game. You already know what's gonna happen. Remember? So roll. Oh fuck! I do know. I do know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm using a coin. I'm using, use the I'm fucking using, coin. Oh god. There you go. But I'll use the coin as well. You can't uh, you already save passed the coins. it, didn't you? Oh no! I. No, I should be good. No, I got a ten the first time. I'll uh, roll with the coin then. So what did you roll, Mist? Uh, roll for the second oh, time. Oh, roll Mist. again. Okay, yeah. hold on. Uh, what is it? Yeah, 12 you, plus 3. You passed. Uh, then, uh, uh, Esmeralda, you failed, right? Mm hmm Did yes. you roll again? Yes. Still What'd you failed. get? Still failed? Uh, five. Yep. Do you want to use your fade point? Um. I'll tell you what the result is. So how it, how it works is I'll tell you the result and you can reverse it. You're going to okay. age horribly. Your body takes on a totally different powerful feeling you feel your bones wilt as your body begins to enter the ethereal plane what do you want to do i'm going to start rolling I, if i roll you can't reverse it do you want to do your fate point yeah i'll use my fate point okay i'll say now you pass so i'll remove your fate point. everyone passed everyone now passed but i sucked out a lot of juice of the group all right but now uh, the ghost gets to attack it attacks Sinros. well you did you fail sinrose yeah, I used inspiration, and I had advantage, and I got a six and a three. It was meant to happen. Do you want to use your fate point? Nope. Okay. Let me look at it again. So, Sinros. I roll a d4. You're going to age. You age by ten years. And gnomish years for now. Uh, it is now still the ghost attack. So that's just a passive ability. I waited to do it till now. The ghost reaches out for you, Marcus. Oh, no. As it begins to enter your soul and intertwine oh, with it. You need to make a charisma save. This is its action for now. Christmas save. Christmas saving throw. It's on your stat sheet on the bottom one. You can just hit that button and roll. Yeah, it's just wrong, but we'll roll it. Well, how's it wrong? It needs to be added more. So it's eight. Eight. So it'd be nine. And I'll use my inspiration. 10, 11, 12, 13. Remove the inspiration. Irina saved your ass. The goal, the ghost tried to possess you and fails. We'll go down in the account. Sinrose, it's your turn. That was a close one, Marcus. You got you set you were alive by this the uh, hair on your fucking ass on that one. Irina needs a hug from you after that one. <laughs> Alright, so what are you doing, uh, Sinros? Actually what I will do is you know, matter at all. I'm gonna make two minor illusions. One will be another clone of Marcus I'm standing next to uh, okay, what else do you wanna do? of Marcus, and I'm going to make a crying baby in the bed. Crying baby in the bed? The ghost yes. sees partly yes. through the ethereal plane and back and forth. Your illusions have no effect. Next person oh, yeah. down, missed. Oh, we already did. Oh, it's missed. Your turn next. What do you want to do? Um, I'm going to use uh, Channel Divinity Turn Undead. I need to make a charisma save. Wisdom. Okay. And the DC is 13. All right. The ghost can see, like things with true sight and so on, can see through your illusion, Sinros. Um, it doesn't have true sight per se, but it sees through the ethereal plane and your plane is in the material plane. So it can easily distinguish what is real and not real, really. Um, I rolled a 10. Okay, so it's A nat failed. 10. Let me take a look. It's afraid of you, right? Yeah, it's afraid of me, and it has to it's try to stay 30 feet away from me at all times, which this room is so small, so... It has, it's not its turn yet, but it's not going to try to attack you. Um, but you bust out your symbol of Voltoon, raise it up, the ghost looks afraid of you. Uh, it is now Marcus's... I'm sorry, Mallory's turn. My turn. 
Okay. Um, all right. You almost um, feel like this. You almost feel like your soul was ripped away there, Mallory. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, what do I if I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I think I'm gonna change back to um, blunderbuss. Go back with the gun. Just change my rollers here real quick. Sure. Uh huh. Okay. Um, I'm gonna take another grit point and I'm gonna try and do a dazzling shot at it. Uh, um, okay, let's roll to hit. Um, do I have sh- uh, No. Um, let's make it sharpshooter too. Why not? That's what it's Yeah, 18. you're rolling really good. You hit. Yeah. Your bullets okay. flare out at it. Now, some of the shrapnel passes right through it unharmed, but some of its okay. body is still in the material plane. Uh, but he needs to do a 14 for a con save. It takes 10 damage, because it does half damage yeah. from material objects. And I don't think it's immune. Let me just double check to non non magical damage. No, it's fine. Uh, yeah, it takes 10 damage. Then I need to make a save. Yeah, a DC save of 14. It fails. Has yeah. disadvantage on its next attack. Yes. Let's go to uh, Marcus. The ghost um, the ghost almost possesses you, but the words of inspired by Irina saves your ass. Okay. I'm going to cast protection of good and evil on myself. Say, Tear be with me and cast this evil aside. And then I say, and Tear will smite you from this land. And cast Hexblade Cursed. My turn's over. <laughs> you have a curse token? Drop it right next to the creature. Uh, you have it on your battle board. You're going to oh, take wait, that token it. and drop it on the board. Got it me. is now Irina's turn. I am going to um, do to another thing here, of sorry. Bardic Inspiration. Mark your tokens. You've used, I think, three out of the four so far. I have used three out of the four. Sucking it out. Uh, shit, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? This is a very dangerous creature, Esmeralda. It's badly wounded. As you I'm guys gonna... are trying to send it into the ethereal plane permanently. Who did I give it to last? Marcus, he's the closest. Yep. I'm just going to do that again. Okay. He's the closest. You see how it says hex there, Neil? Hex, yeah. pretty cool, huh? Mm-hmm. It helps keep five. us track. Uh You get five Bardic Inspiration points. Now you have to use that within ten minutes. Okay, it is now Noni's turn. Oh, oh. Oh, and it has to make a save, right? Because your Moonbeam is still out on it? Right? Noni? Uh, yes, but it would be at the beginning of their turn. But, so I messed um, up, right? No, you're fine. Um, Irina... Did you finish your turn? You did a bonus. Oh yeah, it's okay. It's fine. Um, yeah. So we can roll it an hour on its turn unless it has legendary actions. Um, Nope, no legendary actions. So I'll roll it. But if it yep, why don't you roll it? Okay. Uh, Yeah, I didn't roll. It It has days and hex, but we have to put the counter out so I don't forget. I'm like, I'm looking at all this crap, then I'm getting a little overwhelmed, guys. The ghost is badly okay. injured. Its body is phasing into the ethereal play- plane. How do you want to so, kill it, Noni? <laughs> Beginning of its turn, it will take 10 damage and just fly her into the go- moonlight that is shining down upon it. Yay! Well, that's a good call. Moonlight. You see it just scream out <laughs> and vaporize as it dissipates, as its soul is sent off into the shadow fell. What do you guys do? Is terrifying? the baby still there? The baby's clothes and whatever was there is gone. It's right. disappeared. It was an illusion. Like, thankfully, my curses saved the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was like creepy. What do you guys do? You go to this doorway. You can see through it, Marcus. It leads to the balcony out here, right? But the door is locked. You try the door's to open, locked. You try to open it? No, I, I just say, hmm, this door's locked. Okay. <laughs> what do you guys uh, do? Can do I still have a... Room? Yeah, let me double I still check. detect magic, right? Yeah, well, no, your detect magic is gone now. Aww. 
Can we uh, search the room? You find a hidden door. Ooh. Or a doorway. It leads up to the attic. Do you want to go up to the attic? No, no, yeah. Let's search the rest. You want to search the rest of the, the, yeah, the what's, floor what's here? Yeah, this, like, little tiny little room? I'll yeah, open the door there. Just peek this our heads door, in. it appears to be a small nursery. Oh, God. That's creepy. Do you want to go in and look and search in this room? Uh, ha, 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 ha. Sure, screw it. You go in, the crib is empty. That's not scary. I'm going to pick the lock to the balcony door. Love it. You take your time. The door, the lock seems jammed. Something magical is happening. It's preventing you from unlocking the door. Maybe the mist is outside. Doesn't want us to. Smell. And you look at your okay. arms while you're doing this, uh, Esmeralda. Your body mm -hmm. feels strange. It's starting to feel strange, similar to what was happening to Mist earlier. But you're able to look through the balcony. There's a fog mm -hmm. emanating all around the house. God damn it. What well, do you guys do? it seems like uh, Miss family's surrounding us. So. <laughs> Sorry, guys. You guys want to check out this uh, room, Irina? Yeah. 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 Let me open the door up. I'll just go I'm just following one. Irina. It's like yeah. a nurse room, like a nurse, nursery's room, like a, uh, like a bed nurse. It must have been that ghost room sort of room where she prepares stuff, the housemaid's room. Mm -hmm. Back here, you open it up. I'm assuming you guys are just checking everything. Yeah. There mm -hmm. is like a bath that can be used. Does anyone want to take a shower? Hello. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm made I, of water. I Back I here. Shower, okay, yeah. let's just slow down a little bit. <laughs> I'm sorry. We go into the master bedroom and I don't want to be first this time. <laughs> be first. You see a chest in here, back Ooh, or, like back here. Uh, does Esmeralda want to open it up? Yeah, I'll open and try it up. to look for locks yeah. and things like that. <laughs> Barreling. Barreling through the house. That's a problem with this dungeon. It's like it's really clustered. This was designed by D and D Beyond, guys. Um. Oh. This is, uh, it must have been designed about a year and a half ago, two years ago, and for tabletop. You open the chest, Esmeralda, you find a jewelry box made with gold and silver. If you hand it to Mallory or Cineros, they can appraise it. Do you want to hand it to them? Yeah, I'll hand it to them. Which one do you want? Who do you want to hand it to, Mallory or Cineros? Because they both have tinkers, tools, and loops, and they were both mm -hmm. around gnomes enough to appraise items less than 100 gold pieces. Who's closest to me? Yeah, you tell me. You guys are role playing. Uh, uh. Sinros, here. Can you take a look at this? Oh, uh, here. Oh, God. I just take it. Take a little loop. <laughs> it's worth 75 gold pieces. Write it down on your character sheet. Sinros, yeah. do you feel okay? You open it up. <laughs> uh, you open it up, and it contains three gold rings, each worth Sinros. You open it, open it up as well. There's three gold rings in there worth 25 gold and a thin platinum nex necklace. It's worth a lot more than 100 gold pieces, but just write it down and write it down that you got it from the third floor in the Durst Manor. There's a nice, like, floor here, you know, rug on the floor, a nice fireplace, little desk. There's no papers or anything written out on it. Um, and there's, like, a closet here. Nothing of interest, really. You guys have searched the whole floor. Do you guys want to go up to the okay. attic? Is that actually like a fur like rug like made it's out of It's a bear rug. It's I'm going of... to take the bear rug. Ooh. Yeah. It probably weighs, I'm guessing, 50 pounds. So Ooh. write it down your character sheet if you can carry it. By the way, if you didn't do it from last game, uh, everyone except for Irina, of course, everyone needs to remove 10 days rations for the travel. You already did that. Yeah, I did that already. Great. I did that. You guys are awesome. You guys want to go up to the attic? Might as well. You guys are just yeah. plugging away through the house here. Yeah. Plug, plug, All right, plug, I'm gonna plug, plug. No, no, give me to a second, guys. I'm just gonna. Yeah, Noni oh, has God. packed the bear rug up for fifty pounds. Oh, it's probably no. worth quite a lot, actually. Stop moving oh. your character, Irina. <laughs> it it was outside. I know you've you've escaped. 
All right, let me uh, copy paste you guys up into the attic now. Oh boy. And I'm gonna remove, actually I'm not gonna remove the fog of war. What do you guys wanna do? Wait, we're over here. Okay. I wanna go in this room. You wanna go in this room over here? Right. You wanna go through this door here? Oh wait, there's a door yeah. here as well. You wanna go in this door? Irina's just kind of barging through. I'm like, She's I'm like, following Irina. Irina the Brave. That's what they call her. Irina, uh, stop oh. moving your models. <laughs> I'm sorry. With the fog of war. I missed. I see that. Oh. Irina, we're just going to assume you're in here. Yeah. You yeah. see, like, a bunch of covered up furniture and things like that. Now, in this room, it's dark, though, because you don't have dark vision. Do you continue uh, forth? I, I'm following her. Uh. You, but, by, do, by the way, you've I been in here an hour. The dark vision has worn off. That's what I want to oh, ask you. So flip torch. the token over. I'm already used to see. Now you you put away your shield, Marcus, to carry your torch. No, I just have my torch up. Okay, you have shield. your torch and your shield. Got it. Okay, so it's now five thirty in the morning. Uh, yeah. you have a lamp that you bring out. It's just yeah. You bring it, bust out your lamp, and bust out the lamp. You bust it out, and it's just a bunch of junk, really. I mean, old furniture, things like that. There's nothing really in here. What other rooms you want to go into, guys? Isn't there a <coughs> areas I can light up? Put away the light. Um, the not really. <coughs> this room is light, but this one is not. There's torch lights and lamps around here, but most everybody else has dark vision, so they don't care. I'm gonna turn. I'm gonna put all those uh, on. So you light up see. this room. Do you guys want to yeah. go into this room? Yeah. Yes. Got some. You mean the one that looks like bones in the middle? Well, because yeah. you open the door up, guys. It's got like a mm -hmm. dead family on the ground. Or you go in there. Let me describe the room. Yeah, let's go in there. Uh, you open the door and you guys just all plow in there, fearless if you guys have just destroyed the ghost. <laughs> yeah. I think there was a necromancer in here once before, wasn't there, Noni? At one time? I don't know. Uh, this room contains a bricked up window flanked by oh. two dusty wood frame beds sized for children. Closer by the door is a toy chest with windmills painted on its sides and a dollhouse, which is a perfect replica of the dreary edifice on which you stand. And by the way, you look in the dollhouse, you see the room in there, right? As it's opened up, you see all little miniature models of you guys standing in the house. Oh, no, right no, 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 yeah. no, 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 no,
Can I pull out the will and see what the will specifically says? It bequeathed the house and all the materials to the children in case of the parents' death. You haven't found uh-huh. you haven't, haven't found the bodies of the parents. Mm-hmm. Oh, don't tell me they're downstairs. Don't tell me they're downstairs. In the basement? Don't tell me they're downstairs. In the basement? No, I don't want to go downstairs. She goes. Take right. a nap first. The, the child goes. First. The, oh, Mallory, the, it's going to be fine. The child, the child goes, there's a monster in the basement. Did the monster eat your parents? Her parents left us here. The monster ate their parents. Parents don't just leave children, in my opinion. Children, why'd you run off before? The house. It uses us to bring in travelers like you. You can't escape. And it will slowly devour you. And you look down at your skin, mist, it's starting to dissolve. You take one point of acid damage. I have resistance to acid. You resist it, so you take no damage for now. <laughs> the house is slowly consuming you. Guys, I really oh, we need fuck. to get out of this house. Uh, fuck the monster in the basement. Let's get just get out. And she says you can never leave once you come in. There has to be a way for us to get out. I think Probably there is. Through the it's thing in the, the basement. basement. Okay. Children. The, child, Children. the child says the, the, the small boy comes out and he hold, tries to hold your hand, Marcus. He says, let me show you. He trying oh, to, touch the he's child. trying to enter your body. Do you let him? Well, I have protection from good and evil still active, I imagine. Somehow. How long does it last for? Ten minutes. He can't try to enter it, so you have to willingly let him in if you want to let the, the creature into you. You're going to show me the creature? The creature's a small boy. It's a ghost. No, no. I said, what do you what do you plan on doing? I'm going to show you or, to the... He says, I'll take you to where the monster lives. In the basement. In the, right. We can just walk down there. Yeah. I will show you where it's at. We haven't found the basement the yet. So. Why don't you just point at the house? He takes you... He, he, the you guys, he, he, they, both of the children walk out, right? So I'm just going to mark it here on the map. They walk over to this little spiral staircase. They open it up. And they point down, the spiral staircase winds all the way down. It's a hidden staircase of some kind. Down the staircase we go. I don't want to die. Here we go. Oh, children first, right? And as Marcus is going children down first, first, I'm assuming. The children first. Marcus the Brave. You guys are starting to build up your courage a little bit. Champion of Stormwind. Liberator of the people. Climbs down. Be, and the we'll ghost, right ghost leaves you. And he says, good luck. And he vanishes. I'm going to load the map. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. But first, Um, the blindfold. You guys are right here. Oh, look how tiny we are. Now you see him. It is a tiny map. When you guys come down this, you guys just came out through here. You see him right here. Who's him? The room is festered with moldy skeletons. These little chains. (laughs) Shackled against the wall, a wide alcove on the south, south contains a painted wooden statue, carved with the likeness gaunt, pale-faced man wearing voluminous black coat. His pale left hand rests on the head of a wolf that stands next to him. On his right, he has a smoking gray crystal orb. The room exits west, and the north world's chanting can be heard from the west. Where do you guys go? Now, don't move your models. I'll just try to move them because this map is really tight. Do you guys want to take a rest? <laughs> yeah, can we take a nap? Yeah, can we? Time to try to take a rest in a house I that's slowly killing you. I don't think we should you. be doing that. In a room. This is already hear dissolving. Or you I'm hear dissolving. It. Be my guest. You guys we want to take do... a short rest for an hour? Well, can we do yeah. like shifts? For two hours. I don't. I need spell slots. <laughs> do you get, do you get that on a short or a long rest? You look around, Mist, as you're saying that. The shadows are moving. Oh boy. The shadows. Well, guys, I think that we can't take our... <laughs> Alright, let's go yeah. And There's before we much... can even go, let's I go roll forward. initiative. Oh boy, no. Hostile group one goes first. <laughs> the shadows are moving, guys. Pain. Oh, what's happening? Oh my god. Shadows come forming out. 
servants of the Dark One. Ugh, the Dark One. Oh my god, they're creepy. They're see-through. I know. Don't hey, you love these models? Aren't these models awesome? Translucent. They're kind of translucent. So this is where I've spawned mm -hmm. them in. Okay. I go first. Oh, boy. Let me roll. So let me start to see who they're attacking. One attacks Marcus. One Great. attacks Noni. One attacks Sinros and one attacks Mist. So we're gonna start off with Marcus. Nineteen doesn't hit. The shadows just come out of nowhere. From the walls, from the creatures. You guys are kind of debating already wounded, blowing all your spells, fate points, and everything. The next attack is on Noni. 18 hits. Uh, I'm going to roll for damage. 11 points of damage. Let me just double check that. The shadow hits you with a large greatsword. <laughs> Necrotic damage. Uh, no save. Shadow's a very deadly creature. You take 4 points of strength damage. Mark it on your sheet. Is slowly sapping the energy out from you. Next Sorry. hit is on Sinros. Yes. I took four damage? You took 2d6 plus two plus four strength damage. So you take 46, I'm sorry, 2d6 plus two, which I did. I rolled, I rolled high. I rolled a nine plus two, which is 11. Plus you take, I roll a d4. I have a little d4 back here next to the model. I just rolled it. You can check the, if you think I'm fudging it, you can check it. No, I'm, just, um, I'm trying to figure out exactly what. And then you I'm take. To have. So yeah, you take 11 points of necrotic damage. It's undead damage, essentially vile damage, as it reaches out and tears past your, you know, your form. You're not in wolf form or anything like that. And you also take four points of strength damage. So you have to do that. Mark it on your character sheet. You could be encumbered because you have that big bear rug on you right now. Uh, I'm gonna roll for Sinros now. And Sinros, it does not hit you. I rolled a nine. Now I roll for the last one. I rolled a six. It's your guys' turn, starting off with Esmeralda. You found the right hey, place, Esmeralda. There's lots of undead and fiends. But there's I'm no going, gold. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to strike uh, the one right in front of me. Of Noni? Sure. Go ahead, roll. Yes. To hit. The chanting continues. Uh, I can't find my way around this board. Hold on. I know. That's why I told you to save it. Hit sh yeah, shift I one did it. Something. It wasn't. It's fudging it on you. Uh, yeah. Okay. There it goes. Finally reset. Okay. Uh, oh. You you uh, hit an eighteen with your sword, right? Roll for damage. Mm -hmm. Seven. It's badly injured. Put out the token next to it. Put seven on it. Roll for your short sword if you want to. As yeah, you're kind of crawling through these catacombs or dungeon or whatever you want to call it, I'm assuming you got your knives out, your your daggers are out. That's, uh, 16, that's a hit. Roll for damage. So set, we have 7 plus 5. 5, 12. 12 in total, it's still alive. Uh, this giant fucking token of... Dude, because I had to scale the board down, guys. Yeah. So the board is like, whoever made this, like, program this from D&D Beyond, it's like, you guys are all, like, little people now. The inches still count. Let's just put it off to the side, oh. yeah. <laughs> just see how big that token is compared to the board. I know, it's hilarious. All right, who's up next? It's Irina. I'm going to slash the one that's in front of me. Roll to hit. 30-minute warning. You guys made it to the dungeon, at least. I think that's a hit. Let me double check the AC. Roll for damage. Oh, I'm yeah, roll for damage. You just hit. If you just hit, I'll tell you guys the AC. The AC is 12, so we can speed up combat. Put a token out for five damage. Uh do you want to do a bonus action? Irina? Uh, that's okay. 
the one you're attacking is this one, so we want to put the token like over here. Yeah, I, I, hold on, I'm, I dropped it. I'm trying to grab it. I know, fudging it up. Yeah. Uh, Marcus, these vile creatures must be purged! Die! Uh oh, there we go. A little slow. You hit. Six yes. damage. Put out the token. Uh, you're attacking this one right here. Yeah, so I've already got it. Next yep. person. Next person. Let's go to Noni. How much HP do you have, Noni? <laughs> I cannot take another hit like that. Let's just freeze it that way. Shadows are really deadly, even for high level parties. What do you want to do? Well, thankfully, um, Mist has spells to heal. Thankfully, <laughs> I have no spell slots. <laughs> I have spells. It's okay. Um, all right, so I'm going to bonus action turn into a wolf. Okay, and then let's put out your model. Where's your model at? Did I delete it? Maybe. All right, let me pull it out. Um, so I'm going to bonus action turn into a wolf because that was not a happy moment. Um, so you gain difference in HP. So whatever HP you're missing in the wolf's HP average, that's what's missing from the wolf. So you can adjust it using the counter. If you guys can actually manipulate that counter, which I don't know if you can. That's how the math works. What do you do now? Do you want to attack it? Um, yeah. Um, so I'm going to bite down. Into the shadow. A servant of pool. Yes. I'm trying we'll to get out your works. wolf. I'm going to go pull it out another wolf. That's why I want to copy-paste the models out of your bag. It should be at advantage, so it's a 21. Okay. That's a hit, because I told you the AC already. 13 damage. Wow. Where where did you hit it? Which one? The one that attacked me. Uh, it's destroyed. It just vanishes back into the shadow fell. I'm going to try to replace your model here, but i got to shrink it down. Noni ain't messing around. She doesn't like that hit she took. Let's remove your character over here. I'm just going to put you in the little wolf right here. Shrink you down a little more, though. Okay, it is. Who's up next? That's missed. I'm going to cast Toilet Sanctuary. No, not that one. I'm That's sorry. a good Turn spell. On. Everybody around yeah, here get temp HP. I know, I know, I know. I, I don't know, for 10 debating. minutes or something or an hour? It's pretty good. Uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cast Toilet Sanctuary. Anybody Roll with a D8 a plus 3, right? D8 plus... Roll your... Roll it. Or D6, sorry. 1D6 plus 3. Roll it. Everyone <laughs> gains this much in temporary HP. The stars from Nynir come out. Oh, that's as she calls me. on the god of twilight. The whole room shifts as stars begin to emanate out from the surrounding area. And it's a buff to everyone. The cleric is buffing you all. This is an inherent ability. Everyone gains five temporary hit points. Mark it on your D and D Beyond calendar sheet. What else do you want to do, Mist? Anything else? Is um, that all you can do? Is that that's an action? No, that's all it does. Yeah, that's an action. I don't know. It says you end one effect on it. Causing no, it that's if charge. people are charmed. You can also do. You have an either okay. or in that, so you've buffed it. That's the better one. Let's go to the okay. next person, which is Sinrose. Now, Sinrose, I'm going to help you out a little bit. You're muted, first of all. Let me take a look at this creature stat block. So I think you can actually do psychic damage to these. Uh, you, you, you can do psychic sure. damage to them. They have mines. They're not undead. What do you want to do? If the one closest to the tank, intelligence This one right here? All right, let's roll. Yep. I rolled a five, so I missed. Roll for damage, then put the token out. If you don't want to cast a spell. And then I'll roll again since you're recasting the cantrip. <laughs> I failed twice, so just leave out the roll the next uh, d4 token, right? So the second one I rolled a. I actually rolled a zero. And then I did, I failed it, so you just put out the token, do all the work for me. Thanks. Uh, let's go to Mallory. I'm going to shoot it. I'm going to go bang, bang. Uh, I'm going to, yeah. Yeah, so I'm just put make... it, don't, let's not put it in the map. Just put it over here. We can keep track of it off the board. Okay, it's Mallory, sharpshooter. go ahead and That's roll. just hits, I think. That's basically. right, it yeah. just hits. Good job. 
And that goes for a 15 points of damage on um, on uh, the one closest to Mist over here. It has resistance to piercing, so it takes half damage on that. So seven damage. Okay. Seven. Mark it out. I probably didn't count it for you, Noni, but that's okay. I think that one had like one HP left. Um, let us go to... Oh, yeah. Um, oh, I fudged this up. Uh, you guys, uh, it is now Mallory's turn. That was Mallory. It's not okay. my turn. It's just, yeah. Okay. I'm going to roll f against Marcus first. Try to keep him off the board, guys. Just keep him off to the side. Just kind of keep track of him. I'm going to roll to hit against Marcus. Does not hit. I'm going to roll the next one here against... But you killed the one over here. So this one's alive against Sinros. And this one against Mist. So we're going to go against Sinros. That's a hit. Uh, you get no saving throw. Four points of strength damage. Mark it on your character sheet. And you also take seven damage. Necrotic. I roll against Mist. I hit. Mist, you take... I'm going to re-roll it just because it was fudged. It doesn't glitch. No, you take two points of strength damage, plus ten points of necrotic damage. Your guys' turn. We're going to start off with Esmeralda. You take. You just have to adjust it on your character sheet. It'll automatically recalculate your encumbrance. If you hit zero strength, you die. Roll, um, Esmeralda. You're up. Yep, I just moved over in front of that one by Sinros, and okay. I'm going to attack it. Hit. Hit. Half damage. Okay, and then I'm going to attack it with my short sword. So which one did you attack? This one? Uh, my oh. right here. Yeah, one right by Sinros. I moved over there. Okay, so you killed that one. Mm-hmm. Um, you and then swing out with attack. your rapier. Oh, it killed it. It dissolves yep. right in the air. Now you can move if you want to. Uh, yes, I will move again. Do you want to, to move up to the one near, uh, Mist here? Mm hmm Okay, try to, yeah. let's try not to destroy I know, everything. I'm not, yeah, exactly, that's <laughs> It's why challenging. I'm to... This map is not the greatest one. I'll try to do, uh, the ones in the future are better. For whatever reason, this downstairs uh, that's, one. That's good enough, right? I know, the whole map needs to be blown up a lot. Let's go right, to. And I'll attack that one with my short, can I attack that one with my short Yes, you can, because it's a All bonus right. action. Uh, did I clear that out? Oh, Quickly oh. moving through the shadows. Yep. And nope, missed. I do Let's not go hit. to Irina. We're doing pretty good on combat, slash. guys. You're getting her better at this. Good. Roll. I'm slashing there's, it again. There's two of them left. Hit. Nice. You reach out with the rapier and stab it. How do you kill it, Irina? Uh, I I slice across its neck to like. The sh the the shadow just lets out a wispy call. As it just vaporizes in the air past you. Uh, we're now, you can move if you want to. Do you want to move? Uh, sure, I'll move up. Like, yeah. Do you want to move maybe over to here? Yeah. Okay. Let us uh, go to Marcus. Now, you're kind of blocked, so you can't get in there now. I'm just going to turn around and Actually, you zap, can. You can move in there. Zap air. it with my. Uh, Elders Blast, roll to hit. Yeah. Hit. Roll damage. Where'd you guys take that token at? There was a token out there for this damage. Oh, it's gone. Oh, it was for that. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, where you go? for the other one. <laughs> Let me flip it over, guys. Bingo. Seven oh points God. of damage. Yeah, Ten points, points of damage. Out. It takes full damage from this type of damage because it's force damage. You point at it, Marcus, and judgment. A flying gavel flies out from your hand. What do you say as you kill it? Ooh. I say, be gone with you, evil spirit. Okay. What do you guys do? Combat is over. All right. You guys were so just about talking about resting. Rest? <laughs> As Noni has almost dead. <sighs> I almost got one, guys. Almost. Okay. Um, That's why just, you guys had to be level three. Can we go barricade ourselves in a room to where nothing can get to us and to go to sleep? Well, the house can get to us. You look yeah, here the at the question is look like, at the attic thing. Or break it. The attic back. door is now shut, right? The children shut it behind you. Do you want to try to open it? 
No, okay. no, I don't touch nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I've already, I've, I've given you the nonies, which means you're scared of touching anything. I love yes. it. Yes. And center us to try to open it with his mage hand if you really want it. You could try. What do you guys want to do? See this figure of some figure, maybe some cult leader they were worshiping? Hmm. Can't see anything on the map except, yeah, except the over here. So what is it? All it's fog it's of all war? To you guys. Is it fog of war? No, because I can see walls and stuff, but I just I, can't see. Uh, I can only really see the walls and stuff over here. Yeah. Me too. And then there's like two guys here, and that's it. I know that's fucked up. <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is, guys. Where do you guys want to go? I don't want to go. There Marcus, anymore. lead the no, way. No, no. Or Noni, lead the way. No, no. I mean, typically, Irina leads the way. <laughs> yeah, I know. Irina the fearless. I can't see. <laughs> can't see. Oh. Anything. Otherwise, oh. I would. You're right here. I'll lead the way. Hold on. I think Irina. I could kind of see like lines. Oh wait, on there the you ground. go. How about that? Is How about that, like Irina? A... Do you see now? See what? I don't know. Okay. I don't know either. <laughs> you can't see anything, Irina. Uh. You're right here. Do you see where I'm clicking? I, well, I can see where you're clicking. It's just I don't know. I can see. Like, okay, Marcus walls. has moved up. You look. The ground, Marcus, has become misty. The chanting Thank gets you. louder. Where do you want to go? Hmm. Hold on. We go to this really spooky area over here. Esmeralda's moved up. Hold on, you guys. You guys Sorry, are... I can't wait, wait. see where the. Are you guys having problems on. seeing it all? Let me make yeah, sure. Yeah, like I can't. I see everything. I don't see. There's no fog of war, guys. I don't know what the problem is. It's but, like the map's not on the ground for me. Yeah. Like, I can't see a floor. Yeah. Oh, it's a little buggy. I can see a floor. It's a little bugged out. I can see lines. You can just reload it faintly, if you really want. Faintly. Oh boy. Hmm. So like I can. It's a little bugged. See it looks like a maze. Oh it yeah. I can, okay, I can see the lines ish. Yeah. Yeah. Try to follow I'm, the lines. Yeah. This is. You guys see the map? Do you guys see the map though in the basement? You guys just don't see the walls maybe and stuff around. It didn't load in completely. The problem yeah. too with this map when they created it, it's like a shit ton of objects. They just threw everything together in like one little zone instead of like linking it all together and like piecing it out a little bit better. Okay, so you, you guys are walking through this hallway. Uh, Mist, I'm moving you guys in here. Don't move your characters anymore. Hopefully it won't glitch. Okay. I'm gonna just flip Esmeralda up. You guys are moving th through here. I'm having a Mallory above the back. You feel crunching on the feet. Oh. oh no. As you guys do it, we're going to roll for initiative. Oh. As four ghouls emerge from the ground. You know they're ghouls, ghouls. Esmeralda. So I'm going to roll for initiative. Let me see what their initiative count is. Ghosts and ghouls? Yes. Oh my god. It's like an NES <laughs> game. Yeah. Let's see what we got here. They have plus three decks. Oh. What else? No, goblins? No. Ghosts and goblins two. and ghouls? I'm going to put them out. Uh, Mist and Mallory go first, but I'm going to put out the models if I can. They're actually just right on top of you guys. Let me shrink them down because the model wasn't scaled correctly. Just put it right here. They're undead then? They are undead. Ugh. Yeah, thanks, Sinros. One's behind you, Mallory. Ugh. And we'll assume one's on top of Marcus up front here. As you guys are walking through, these dead bodies just emerge from the ground. I rolled for initiative. Mist, you're up. I'm going to cast Turn Undead. Roll. I need to make a save, right? It's just like yeah, thirteen. All right, for each one of them, right? Yep. I will roll four times then. I rolled a nat one on the other ones. It looks like the other ones passed. So I'm gonna assume the one that's closest to you fails. Okay. And it's cowering away in fear when it comes up to your turn. If it can't move away, so let me see where you're at. This one right here, it'll still attack you. I think at disadvantage. Am I right, Noni? No. Oh, sorry. Noni, it's trapped, so it can still attack you. It can't it can get away. Dodge. It can only Oh yeah, it can only dodge. So it has to take the dodge action. As it cowers away in fear. Let's go up to Mallory. Yep. I'm gonna shoot at the ghoul and do we can since it, I'm right next to it, can we also put the fire damage of the gun? Exploding in its face. That's correct. Another D8 damage. You're within five feet. Yeah. Let's hope so, your gun doesn't jam. <laughs> Hopefully. Okay. So that, that, that that's hits. That's like a 28. Yes. Roll, that roll for damage. Plus a, plus a D8. You uh, rolled D8. a nat 20. Oh, you Is did? 
Oh yeah, we, But see, we automatically roll the next one, so you do critical damage on it. So how critical damage works, I gotta probably simplify it just to make it easier. Let me uh, see what the HP on these dudes are. They're not, they're not, let's just say they're not pussies. Uh, let's, no offense taken, hopefully. <laughs> let's um, roll for, so you do max damage with your weapon, for starters, so uh -huh. the D8 damage. So your damage does, so you do 10 plus whatever you rolled. So that's 10 plus 10, 20 damage. Put a token out. It's bloody, but still alive. Plus a, a, a D8, D8 from roll a D8 fire. Damage. Yep, roll a D8. You D8 is this one. Killed. The D8 would also be doubled, wouldn't it? Uh, oh, yeah, uh, we'll count it. We'll count the D8 as double damage. You let off this huge thunder bluff. Bust, right. thanks, Noni, for helping me out with that. This huge thunder bluff, but the whole fucking place echoes. Plus a three. Yep, the whole place echoes, guys. Okay. Right? What? All the monsters know you're here. They're in this we, room. We said that we did it earlier. What did no, you're in a new area now, did. right? What well, did. you did, right? You did it before as well. But now you're in the tight catacombs. Screaming. People are like getting you blood. guys see the stairway over here too, right? All right. So now let's go to hostile group one. This one doesn't attack. It just takes the dodge action. This one is going to attack. I'm going to bully Sinros a little bit. I'll roll to hit Sinros. Entire time. I'll actually attack. How about this? I'll attack Irina just to be friendly. Do what you want. Do what you want. <laughs> I'll attack Irina. Irina, you get hit, and you take. Uh, let me just make sure the damage is correct. Uh, I fudged it up. It's actually I rolled the different one. No, you didn't. Uh, you just take seven points of damage. Make a constitution saving throw. Wait one second. Seven damage. DC 10. Make a constitution DC. saving throw. DC 10. The last one attacks. Let me see who it attacks. It's attacking uh, Marcus. It swings its claws at you and misses. You can only do one claw attack. Your guys' turn continues. Let's go to Esmeralda. Um, so I can't really see the map. Oh, but, you're paralyzed uh, for one minute, Irina. Irina is paralyzed. Um, I could put out the token. I'll show you that you're paralyzed. Uh, I, what are you doing there, uh, Esmeralda? So, so I can't, am I in like a hallway or can I go around this way? I can't see the map, so I don't know where I can move right now. Right now, you're behind Noni in the hall, right here. Oh, I, you, I can move her. Yeah, I mean, you're really kind of screwed. You can move her, you can go right here. Oh, I, Sweet, thank you. Yeah, then, we'll allow you to move up there. You see, do you see everything now or no? No, I I, still, I see the characters. I just don't see like where the models I can haven't up. loaded up for you. You yeah, can swing at the ghoul. Try to attack. Right. I will attack. <sighs> You're rolling nineteen. You hit. Oh. Nine damage. Roll again right there. for your offhand. Boom. Then put out the token. Right. Let's go to Marcus. You're not gonna kill it. Let's go to Marcus. Nope. I'm gonna use my bardic inspiration because I feel like I'm gonna lose it otherwise. Yep. You're on, so to I, on your attack roll. So 14 for hit? Uh, I think that's a hit. Oh boy. You think so? All right, great. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. The AC is 12. Now, Esmeralda, you know about the ghouls and other creatures. Ghouls are like the lower form of undead. Okay. A part of the zombie kind of family. There's like zombies, ghouls, and something else. Actually, sorry, 12 damage. My, that's a plus one sword. Now, I think they have resistance to damage here. Let me take a look. No, they do not. I was going to say it's a magic sword, so. It doesn't matter if it's magic. It's not like third edition. Put the counter down for how much damage you did. Already there. Thank you. Next person up is Irina. You guys are doing great on the combat. It's going pretty smooth. Irina, you're paralyzed. Moving on. Let's go to Sinros. <laughs> the ghoul looks at you. It's ready to bite you. <laughs> Sinros, you're up. Um, I can't tell you if they're immune to psychic damage or not. Can I? Uh, you'd have to scream and add it to him your turn. Or you'd have to talk about it. Let me take a look. I'll just be friendly to you. This thing is not immune to psychic damage. 
some of its residual spirit is still connected to the material plane from the Shadowfell. You can use psychic damage if you want to. It's really all I can do is the They're still not immune to your illusions. You could try to use illusions if you want to. You're a little quiet, buddy. I can barely hear you. Sorry, I don't know why it's like that tonight. Uh, just have it make the intelligence saving throws. So Sure. Intelligence saving throws on the one closest to me. I'll just roll them both just to speed it up. <laughs> Double fail. <laughs> Double fail. It works for me. They take full damage from psychic damage. Put it down on the counter. Yep. This one's taking 21 damage, guys? Okay. It's badly injured. Which one are you attacking, Sinros? This one, the one on right here. Yep. Yep. Uh, yep, that's fine. You can put it there. <laughs> it works for me. Okay, well, whatever. Just put whatever it off to the side, just so we're keeping track of it in a way. It is a failure on its next uh, saving throw, right? Okay. Yeah, it's It'll get those three subtracted. Let's just turn your character around so we know you're kind of attacking. I'll let you turn him the rest of the way. Um, it is now Miss turn. Uh, I guess I'll cast Twilight Sanctuary again. You can't. You can only cast it once per short or long rest. Doesn't say that. It does. There's a little counter there. Let me pull it up. Do you say so? <laughs> Question. Are you, trying to Are you trying to fudge me? No, I'm just kidding. No! <laughs> Twilight Sanctuary I, is. Because there's not like a little checkbox like it has under Eyes of Night. I know, I see that now. Rest. Yes, Nani? Is it my turn? Uh, did I it's skip like, over you? That's Miss Second. Oh, turn. my bad. Miss, you don't get to do it. I'm sorry. Noni, you're right. Okay. <laughs> I was about to say I, I, either we started at the beginning or you're using her second turn. Um, okay. I'm gonna go nom nom. For now, Miss, we're just saying it's once per day. I have to review the rule on it. Because you can't just keep spamming it. Um, 23? That's a hit. 10 damage. Divided by nothing, because it doesn't have resistance to that stuff. How much damage does it have in total? 10. It's a fresh body, okay. Oh, wait. No, that's the one that Marcus hit. So is that your 21 over here, Marcus? Yes. It dies. So 31. Oh yeah, it's totally mauled to death. You start to rip into its flesh. It dissipates. Arms and limbs are just flying off. Okay. This one right here. Um, it is now Miss turn. I have to read up on that one because it's from one of the other books. It's from Tasha's Cauldron, page 35. But you can't, we can't spam that. You can only cast it once per day or something. Okay, well. Once per short thing, rest or something. The only thing I can do is hit it with one of my things. So I'll go to swing at the one in front of me with my mace. You can't turn, you can also try to turn undead again though, can't you? Well, they're still turned as long as they haven't taken any. Damage. Oh, because they have to make the saving throw once, right? You can't just keep yeah. spamming it, okay. Got it. You can only do it once per round of combat. Okay. Uh, Roll to hit. Um, okay. You're attacking the one that's cowering in afraid of you. You attack with disadvantage since it's dodging you. I'm on the wrong side. So you're going to roll that dice once. We're gonna but it's take... cowering, so wouldn't it just be even money? No. It's a dodging in the attack. I mean, I can review it. We can retcon it later. I don't see cowering, oh, though. See, here's the status effects over here. There's no such thing as cowering. 19. You have to roll tw uh, twice because it's ha dodging you. So you attack ah. at disadvantage. You miss. Seven? Nope. Let's There's go to Mallory. You're g you've reloaded your gun. The, ent the entire dungeon knows you're here. Whatever's yeah. chanting in the, in the rooms, in the hallways, they know you're here. 10 minute yep. warning yeah okay 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 so i'm gonna go i'm gonna move like two squares to be here ish and i'm gonna try to shoot switch. at this one 
Yeah, I'm gonna shoot at, with my crossbow instead of my gun. Okay, go ahead and shoot. I'm, I'm praying, yeah, baby. If I don't make enough noise, maybe they'll ignore it. Uh, let's yeah, regular roll. That's yeah. You rolled uh, a nat twenty again, so yeah. critical. We'll assume. <laughs> I've got the Percy blessing. You're, you're just destroying these things. We'll assume, for brevity's sake, it's destroyed. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's one zombie uh, ghoul left. It's still alive. The other one was kind of cowering away. Actually, you attacked with disadvantage, so you didn't oh. get the critical because it was dodging. Okay. But I will assume for brevity's sake that you destroyed it still. Yeah, it's okay, fine. Okay, okay, okay. So let's go to me. It's attacking Ma uh, <laughs> Irina. You're getting attacked. You're totally paralyzed. It actually reaches out, has both of its basically claws on you. It attacks you with a more deadly attack. It's bite attack. I rolled a hit. I roll with advantage, and I hit, and then I do nine points of damage to you, Irina. Make a constitute, I, you're already paralyzed, so I won't let you do it again. Uh, you guys see Irina just getting tore apart as it's, she's paralyzed by this ghoul. Your guys' turn, Esmeralda. Can I get over there? The, the rooms are crowded, so no, you can't. The only two people are next to her are Sinros and Irina who's getting just overpowered. The floors are misty. As you're running across them, you hear the crunching of bones. Am, am I able to shoot from where I am, or are there walls in the way? I'll allow you to get in and shoot, yeah. But you have to All shoot right. at, I don't think it's disadvantage, but I'm moving your model. Uh, yeah. You have a minus two to the AC, though. So go ahead and shoot. Because okay. you're shooting over Sinros, really. And Sinros is trying to move out of the way. You know, mm -hmm. his little gnomish body, he's, like, he's kind of terrified. You know. Ghouls and Six, stuff four, are shooting over. Uh, Roll for damage. Eight, four. Now, does this one have any damage, guys? It has eight damage? Eight damage. Three. Oh, rough. Uh, add it. Uh, add the damage of four. Uh, let's go to Marcus. I can't plow in there. You I cannot guess. plow in there. So we got mist right on right here. Really, we got Mallory over here. You know, pit taking shots. This is the problem. You guys are fighting in a five-foot hallway, really. I'm just going to stand guard here in case something else comes around the corner. <laughs> All right, let me describe the room that you're in, though. I'm oh, ready, ready in action. Sure. You're in a room. There's, like, some tables and things, like some candle bras and stuff. Uh, you go over, and I guess you light them up. Oh, yeah. You light Definitely. them up. Okay, let's go crap. to uh, Irina, who's paralyzed. Let's go to Sinros. Intelligence save. It'll be. I'm gonna roll double of them. Let's see if I pass. I also roll the first one at a, at the minus, so it fails on the first one, fails on the second one. Fails both, so that means I do two d six. Three whole damage. You need some of uh, Mallory's luck, right? <laughs> Uh, so roll, roll it up. Okay, great. You're doing amazing. I love it. The master illusionist. Let's go to Mist. Can I pull Irene away? Is that something I'm able to do? <sighs> it would be an attack of opportunity or something like that. I don't know. Roll a d20. We'll sit, just roll the d20. We'll see what happens. Halo, move. Pray, pray to the gods as Irina's pray. getting mauled to death by this zombie. This fiendish creature. Roll a d20. Just eating my face. Not two d20s, <laughs> just one d20. Well, I rolled uh, you rolled a seven, I'll say you failed. Let's yeah. go to Noni, you're up. Is there anything I can see? You can't get in there. I mean, you smell the bodies, though. I mean, you're stepping on some bones in this hallway. All right, I'm going to wander in and keep keep up with Marcus. You're now. just trying to make sure he's safe. It's missed your turn. My turn again? Uh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's your turn. <laughs> your turn, missed. Did you just go? I, I just went. Uh, you went right before it because I'm looking at the initiative counter. Do you have me on there twice again? Yeah, well, There's that's because of your advantages. So I keep double counting you. Mallory, you're up. 
Okay, uh... You can yeah, shoot I'm at gonna, it if you want. Yeah, crossbow again. I'm just gonna go back to my sheet. I just, wanna see, see, I just wanna see if I can drop Irina. <laughs> I don't no, know. Irina! <laughs> and that's okay, that's like 23. Uh, 10 points of damage. How do you kill the final <laughs> ghoul? Um, with my crossbow bolt, right, it just shoots straight through the nose, but then it gets stuck in the back of the head, and just it just kind of plops down like, yeah. So Irina is paralyzed. Let me see the, let me reread it, make sure I got it all correctly. Irina, you're just standing there stunned. I, you don't fall prone, from what I understand. I didn't read the status effect exactly. Is it considered a curse or a disease? Or no? I'm reading. It lasts for one minute. So about one minute goes by and Irina comes out of the paralyzation. <laughs> You're alive. How many hit, hit points do you have, Irina? Hoo -hoo. Do we still have the um, whatever the thing was where hit points went up or did, are they gone oh, that's now? Ten. It would have ate through your first five hit points, your temporary hit points. Yeah, yeah, so it goes through your temporary I... hit points. Uh, wait a minute. So then I think I'm at... Not as story-focused as our wait previous a... game, but you guys are kind of just dungeon crawling. Wait, so... Do temporary hit points just go... So your temporary hit points go first. Me? So I think there was five. So whatever yeah. I did, so five minus whatever damage I did to you. Okay, so I've got I think nineteen. I'm gonna say nineteen. Okay, Better great. How? What are you at, Cinderos? The party is getting. You guys are all moving into the room. I'm just gonna move you guys all up in here. This is some kind of meeting room of some kind. Marcus has kind of moved ahead, lighted up the things. It leads into a bedroom of some kind up here, and that's where we will end our adventure tonight. Ah. Uh. For now. Of you guys actually got a lot farther than I thought you would, so I didn't even think you guys would even make it up how far you guys got. By next game, we'll probably finish this dungeon. There'll be one final railroad track let out, <laughs> and then you guys can do whatever you want in Butterovia. And this will if hope we survive. You guys having fun? Is this what you guys like? So I know some of this is like new. This is a part of like, this is one aspect of Dungeons and Dragons. There's like role playing aspects to it, and then there's like this dungeon crawl aspect to it, which some people like, you know, the combat focused. What do you guys like so far? Then we played a few. Games. I would like a short rest. Would <laughs> <laughs> do. This also helps manage, you know, your expectations as the this now this dungeon, as you can believe it, guys, they designed this for level one through three. So you guys would have already been like basically smoked. By that ghost in the upper stairs was supposed to just attack you right off the bat too so you know some of the dungeon is harder than this so like this is a very de dangerous dungeon i've obviously modified a few things um you guys i'm just telling you now you could take a short rest if you want to that would be nice do you guys want to just do it for brevity's sake take it right now before we log yeah click the button or whatever for the short rest i'm gonna assume you guys kind of make your way you're just in this room right now and you guys are like kind of guarding but two hours go by. I'll mark it in on the, the, the time cap. It is right now 7.30 in the morning. So I think you click it, you also gain back a certain amount of hit dice and a certain amount of spells. D&D Beyond automates a lot of that. If you just click the short rest button, I think. Yeah, yeah. Does that work well, for you guys? It gives me an option to check mark, reset max HP, and then check mark up to three clear. It doesn't things. work correctly. You're going to have to actually manually roll your hit dice. So the hit dice, let's... Noni is more of an expert than this than I am. So your hit dice is 3d8, right? For something like that. It's your level times your hit dice, right? Noni? So you roll, uh, you just roll your hit dice. It's like a healing potion almost. Well, your the number of hit dice is determined by your level. Like, um, yeah. So I have three. Yes. And my hit dice is... Do you guys know your hit dice? So eight, and then plus it actually says modifier. it. Yeah. yeah. So it says it Twice. under D&D Beyond. So why don't you guys roll it right now and add it? Yeah, you should be able to click roll hit die and it should roll for you then in D, &D beyond mm -hmm. awesome just do it in D, D beyond you know a part of D, D guys is me just trusting you that you're not fudging rolls too a little bit 
But we yeah. click all of our hit die that we have. And if you, you want, use all of them. you don't well, want to roll. You don't want to go to full HP. It's hit dice, but you click all all hit die. If we're gonna be taking a short rest, can Sinros look at those scrolls that we got earlier? <laughs> yes, I. Uh, um, I have no, to because to rest you really can't do anything, and. That would take about 30 minutes of an hour, really. You guys are all in the room, so you don't have to take watch, essentially. Because, I mean, this room is kind of safe. There's only two ways to exit. The chanting, though, is like, if you think about it, the, there's a chanting going on. It's kind of eerie. It's fucking weird. You know, there's skeleton bodies in the other room with that statue. So you guys killed some zombies. You killed some. So the area that you're in now is safe, we're going to say. So as a DM, I'm going to play it kind of nice because this is a challenging dungeon. You guys having fun though? That's the big thing. You guys, mm -hmm. this is like a. Yeah, those shadows were scary though. Shadows are <laughs> extremely deadly. Even if you're higher level, if they sap you to oh, your strength, uh, you're whooped. Um, oh, Sinros, so you cannot gain those uh, hip, those strength hit points back until I think a long rest. Yeah, that's why Noni was happy to be a dog. <laughs> Sorry, what's your any other questions before we call it? Uh, no, but can I give my three scrolls out so they're not in my inventory? Yeah, you can give them to another party okay. member. Do you want to give them to Sinros? Yeah, does anyone else want one? Well, they haven't been identified. Okay, oh, okay. I'll give them all three to Sinros then. So Sinros, write it down in your character sheet that you have three scrolls from hey, the third floor, I think, in the Durst Manor. What? One thing to ask before I go, uh, when it comes to like uh, what we've been attacking... The, uh, yes. I'm just reading the description of the sword. Any demon, fiend, devil, or other foul creature takes 2d6 radiant right. damage. So basically how your sword works is if you attack a demon, fiend, but not it's not undead. So undead okay. doesn't So it just says literally that. Demon, because it's fiend. basically a cre any creature from the abyss. So when a, someone goes, like a spirit goes to the abyss, they're slowly transformed into like a devil or a demon or something like that, right? And mm -hmm. those are the creatures your sword can actually do damage to. Irina... This is your second or third game, right? You having fun? Yeah, I'm having fun. Okay. It's going well. Just almost right. got whooped. I'll see y'all. Okay. That's it, guys. <laughs>